bullshit. He watches his mother shoot his father three times in the back. I'm Mr. Blackman. There's the puppies. I look like Quasimodo to you. What is that? Let's uh, get this impact over with. We open up. Oh, the name of the show, by the way. Take my wife, please. Ha, ha, ha. Angle was doing Hindu squats. Karen walked in. Angle said, I'm warming up for a match. What do you want? She said, well, last week we were both a little hard on each other, and we need to go back to where we were when we were dating, thinking about things we had in common and why we were why we were together. I want to start over, she said. And he began laughing and said, oh, the jealousy thing with your other husband didn't work, so now here you are with this. He said, keep your mouth shut, open yours, and listen. He said the day they got married, he said two things I do and I'm the boss. He said as long as she understood that, everything would be fine. And Karen said sometimes you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And he said, are you talking about you or the belt? He said, I know I could live without you. And then she was angry and said, can you afford to? And he called her Heather Mills. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, kicked her out, and that was that. At least they had something to argue about this week. I will uh, give them that. All I know is every segment with Kurt and Karen screaming at each other always leaves me hating both of them. <laughs> well, it's understandable. Booker T came out and cut a promo. He said he was tired of all the underhanded tactics. He wanted to see Robert Roode face-to-face. Uh, Roode's music played, but out came Peyton Banks instead. She said Roode wasn't there, but he was on the way. In the meantime, she had a message to deliver him. She slapped him and then demanded he hit her back. Why? Why did she want Booker T to hit her? I don't know. But anyway, Tracy hit the ring. They had a cat fight. Security broke it up, and it was uh, to the back. Tracy bouncing out to the ring was a wonder to behold. Must have caused her great pain, but it was good for me. <laughs> then we had uh, to the back for Team 3D, trying to lose weight. Uh, they were attempting to... Uh, they were trying to lose weight, so they went to a buffet. Yeah. I don't get it either. Well... But it led to a wacky little video. Fat asses. What can you do? I, I guess they, they, it, it did lead to the point where Bubba, where Bubba Ray looked into the camera and asked, Did you tell them about the weight gimmick? Now, well, that made me laugh. There's so many great ideas they can do, so every idea they do just comes off bad in comparison. I mean, every person listening to this right now could think of a funnier thing that they could do with the Dudleys losing weight. Instead, we get this bullshit... It wasn't terrible, but there's so many there's so many things they could have done. We had Borash interviewing Steiner and Petey Williams. Petey was happy that Scott had helped him. Steiner said, listen, this whole thing started with a disagreement on two fronts, yours and yours. He said he could look past the fact that Petey was a short, squatty bastard from Canada because he had heart. And Petey tried to speak up, but Scott told him to shut up. He said they had a tag match tonight, and Petey better not fuck it up. And uh, once he did, if he passed the test, he would be ready for initiation. And P was like, what? It doesn't matter. Scott Steiner was awesome. It, this was a moment where we talk about how every wrestler in TNA is just another wrestler. Not, Not Scott, Scott Steiner. Not he Scott. is a star. He's he's the guy that, that tees us, actually. He does not like the show. He does not know what's going on. He does not pay attention to anything he's not in. He's just filled with hate. He just tries to get through it. We had Steiner and Petey against Machismo and Dutt. Rocka Khan is now beating on dudes outside. It uh, broke down into a four-way, and Steiner hit Sanjay with the briefcase, and then Petey hit the destroyer for the pin. Sanjay's selling was awesome, and Steiner and Petey are a fun team, so I give this little segment a thumbs up. All I wrote about this is exactly what you said, and then thumbs up, so apparently it was fun. My memory of this show is pretty bleak, i got to tell you. We had more dieting stuff from Team 3D. They were taken into a candy store. Don't ask how any of this has to do with <laughs> losing weight. Their trainer, Eric, uh, it was uh, Johnny, Johnny Devine. Devine. His idea was, I'll take you into a candy store and make you not eat anything. That's a poor I, trainer. I don't know. If your trainer does anything like what we saw on this show, get a new trainer. Fire him. my only advice. I chuckled when Bubba Ray embraced the fudge counter. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Brush interviewed Eric Young, who is still hiding from Relic and Black Rain. He was actually afraid, quote, they're going to kill someone tonight, he said. Kaz walked in with pictures of a bunch of actors playing characters, Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, etc. They're all fake, he said, all of them. And Young wanted to know what about the Loch Ness monster. That wasn't an actor. And again, they tried to 
write funny comedy, and it fell flat. And the list, the, the giant stack of photos that Kaz had was something called the Booger Beast. And he asked, who hasn't heard of the Booger Beast? I know this is radio, but I assure you all, I am raising my hand right now. And I'm, you're a geek. And I'm a geek. So I don't know what the hell this was or, or why we should be afraid of it. But apparently it's not real anyway. Team 3D. Indian segment. Curry Man and it was a shitty segment. Team 3D against Curry Man and Shark Boy. We had another Team 3D skit. This was where I got mad. I've been trying not to get mad. When they said that this Team 3D skit was provided by Paparazzi Productions, I was very mad. And why is that, Brian? I could have sworn that Paparazzi Productions was Alex Shelley's crew. The same Alex Shelley in the Motor City Machine Guns who was having a feud with Team 3D. Is this shit that hard to remember? <laughs> is this shit that hard to remember? I don't know. I, I, I guess so. I don't know why this one had to be by Paparazzi Productions, but the other two were not. I don't know why it could have just been another video. They had to bring out the Paparazzi Productions angle, which we have not seen in a quarter year. That filled me with hatred, actually. I, I will not. I, I will not deny that it, my my heart turned black at that moment, <laughs> but. Moments later, it was filled with golden light again when Curry Man came Curry out. Curry Man came out. Curry Man now is an entrance video, which is the best goddamn thing this company has ever done. Yeah. He holds out his wrist where it says spicy, then he holds out his other wrist where it says hot, and then he dances, and then he gets in the ring and he's dancing, and there's a spiraling picture of three pictures of him dancing. It's all so great. They were going to face Team 3D, this being Curry Man and Shark Boy. And long story short, Team 3D did not make weight. And so, yes, they're both too fat. And uh, this was after dieting all week. After all that bullshit with the losing weight videos. And after after not making weight, Earl Hebner said, and I quote, Hey, both of you guys are disqualified. See ya. And that was the end. <laughs> this whole thing could have been magic. <laughs> Instead, it's so lame. <laughs> they quarter Bubble was it. so funny last week. This week it's just like bad comedy falling flat. Then we had Borash interviewing Karen, and his question was, marriage, everything, where does it go from here? And she began weeping and wanted a hug, and AJ walked up and said, listen, Kurt's a wrestler. We're not the most sensitive people in the world. It's just the way it is. He said Kurt loved her. She knew that. It was just the nature of the beast. We're all like that, he said. And she goes, no, you're not like that. You make me feel special. And he said, don't worry. I'll go talk to Kurt about this. It'll be okay. He gave you a, a kiss on the head and ran off, and that was that. Just as this was AJ Styles was making lots of excuses for Kurt Angle's emotional spousal abuse. Yeah, lovely. Sure. Then after commercial, Shark Boy was demanding a tag match with anybody, and he was trying to get everybody to chant what, and nobody would. My God, did that fail? This was sad and embarrassing, actually. So suddenly out came Relic and Black Ray, and they had a short match. Curry ran wild, and uh, then Bubba ran down and took the ref. Divine whacked Curry with a Kendall stick, and suddenly this was not the finish. Curry did a dive onto him backstage. Then Kaz ran down, or outside. Then Kaz ran down. I don't know. There was a lot of bullshit going on. Anyway, long story short. Eight men were involved in the segment. Sharky pinned Rain. Yes. Sharkboy and Curry Man are allowed to pin the tag team of Black Green and, and uh, Relic. They can't pin Bubba Ray one on, two on one, and they can't pin Devon two on one. No. So we had a big brawl, and then the bad guys overwhelmed them. Numbers advantage. And then uh, Eric Young made the save, cleared the ring, and, and uh, that was that. Uh, actually, no, Brian. Oh, he, no, he didn't. He, no. he, he Eric came Young down. Came out, but he's still a pussy who's afraid of monsters. And he ran away, and people booed. He ran away, and people booed, and then Kaz got put through a table for his efforts. Hell of a baby face. So come to think of it, it was, there were nine men in the segment. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Thumbs down. Yes, and then it was to the back. And Kaz gave a Bubba Bomb to, or got a Bubba Bomb, and then it was to the back. Rude showed up in the ring, said, Tonight, the running stopped, the legend of Booker T fell. Or this was the, I would, this was to the back. Then he went to the ring anyway. Booker came out and they just had a brawl. <laughs> I thought they I, might I, save this for pay per view. I was wrong. No. They they Why brawled. They, do such a thing? they brawled. They they handcuffed Booker to the ring ropes. Uh, Rude began whipping him. Tracy ran down to make the save. They handcuffed her to the ropes. They were whipping her. Booker was screaming and I quote, "I'm going to kill you! I'll kill you, Bobby Rude." Security finally broke it up, and it was actually a hell of an angle, but I was I was just confused. It could have been done better. It, at least now, if they have a 
mixed tag team strap match of the pay per view. It make, there's a reason for it because of this segment here. But it, it, it I, again, yes, it seemed like too much all at once. I did get to see for the second time in an hour, Tracy bounced down to ringside. So hey, that's a giant thumbs up. Someone's watching this show and knows what's good on it. Somewhere in here, before this or right after, but there was a, a a long VKM video package about the tragedy that's befallen Kip James and BG James. And then we were promised next week we would get TNA Rough Cut, wherein they rip off the 24-7 concept, and cameras are going to follow Kip James and BG James all day, and we're going to see the results. I have to admit, I am intrigued. I can't wait. I hope Billy Gunn goes shopping. Sure. In Victoria's <laughs> Secret. Yes. For himself. Elevation X, they did a plug. This was awesome. All the wrestlers were talking about how dangerous it was and not fun to watch. There's a pay-per-view plug for you. <laughs> and then at the end of it, so at least they've got sort of the ghoulish appeal where they're telling the fans, hey, you might see someone die here. Then they show AJ in the other Elevation X match taking a bump that was not that bad. No. He just fell. Then we add Storm. James Storm yelling at Jackie backstage for booking him in a ladder match tonight when he'd been drinking the night before. And she said, listen, you've got this Elevation X match coming up. You better get over your fear of heights or you're dead, she said. And he said, I'm James fucking Storm. I'm not afraid of heights. And uh, she he said, found a way. He mentioned that when he was in AMW, he was doing all the jumping off the ropes, and jumping off the cages. He never said Chris Harris' name, but he pretty much buried him here. Yeah. He said... Uh, she said, listen, Eric Young's afraid of a monster. Everybody's afraid of something. You're afraid of heights. That's fine. Big whoop. And he said, big whoop for her since she didn't have to be 20 feet in the air on a platform where the only way to win was to knock the other guy off. And she said, let's just take it one day at a time. And he said, well, let's start today. You better have a plan for the ladder match. So they had a ladder match, Young and Storm. They just went six minutes, excluding the commercial. Hell of a ladder match. And uh, anyway, the finish saw... Uh, Eric Young knocked outside, and, and he was just outside forever, so he'd been killed. Hell of a baby face again. Storm went to climb the ladder, but he was too scared of, of the uh, the six-foot ladder here. So Jackie tried to uh, bump him up with her, her head in his ass, and that failed. So finally she climbed the other side, got the belt, gave it to him. Welcome to TNA. There are no rules. And uh, he celebrated. We must recapture this moment here. Jackie climbed the ladder to retrieve the TNA Drinking Championship of the World, and in doing so, transferred it from Eric Young to James Storm. You may all update your records now. Yes. And then Rhino came out and gored him out of his boots. It was the most awesome gore, was, and they didn't show a single replay. Uh, yeah, and it, it wasn't even a good angle. No. It, it was the same awesome bump he took in the pay-per-view, so he's the greatest man alive. And But, yes, it was he gored him, and, and that was it, to the back. I really don't want to see Elevation oh, X. and then Rhino stole the drinking belt. Oh, yeah. Perhaps he'll try to drink from it. Can anyone care about any of this? No. Here we are asking the questions again. Who could possibly care about any of this? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm not in a bad enough mood to ask it. It it was just, it happened. I I, I will not judge. AJ met with Angle, and he said he got caught up in the moment with Karen. It would never happen again. And Kurt said, um, I don't know. Who cares? This is the worst goddamn love triangle there's ever been. I'm just going to move on. This is not Edge, Matt, and Lita. It's the opposite of that. So then we had uh, Awesome Kong versus Angelina Love in the most brutal match I ever saw in my life. Kong killed her with a spinning back fist. I mean, this was the most brutal thing you've ever seen in your life. Shoney Carter's spinning back fist may be safer. And then she hit, hit her with a sit-out powerbomb for the pin. Uh, I would wrestle Ken Kennedy before I had a match with Awesome Kong. He'd kick your ass. And for those of you wondering, Angelina Love did in fact suffer a concussion and a broken finger in this match. So it was exactly as brutal as we thought it was when we watched it. So, I don't know. This is a minor detail in the, in the history of minor details, but earlier in the match, Angelina Love tried this weird reverse stunner thing, but she's too small, and Kong didn't bump at all. So later, Kong gets the heat, and then later Love makes a comeback. This time she hits the move. Neither announcer made mention of this. Yeah. They suck. So, so, then ODB came out. Yeah. And as she's slapping her breasts and her buttocks and that weird thing she does for Christ knows what reason, out came a vision of passion that called Gail Kim. She was lovely this evening in her jeans and her white top, and I was stricken. I was stricken dumb. She's amazing. And we had Kong and ODB in the ring. Thumbs down. They had a brawl. Apparently it's a three-way at the pay-per-view. I, I, uh... Yeah. Well, you see, they only have two baby faces. They have to make sure one of them gets booed. Moreover, for what 
whatever reason, everyone in that building loves ODB. So even though Gail Kim is the best baby face, she's going to get booed. Oh, and they also knocked uh, Kong over the top to the floor, and Kong grabbed her ankle. So there were nearly two fatalities in this one segment. And this was all one segment, by the way, the longest segment I've ever seen on Impact. This is, yes, more carnage per minute than ever seen before. Oh, yeah, because there was more. Gail and ODB had a shoving match afterwards. Went on forever. Oh, that was a lot of stuff. Angle and Nash. Now, listen. There was a a thread on our board about whether or not Cena sucked. And, of course, Angle got brought into this somehow with people saying that Cena today is better than Kurt Angle. And I noted that if you had Kurt Angle wrestling the guys that Cena was wrestling and you had Cena wrestling the guys that Angle was wrestling in TNA, people would have a much different impression of these two men. Kurt Angle, I don't give a shit what anybody says nowadays. This man is still fucking awesome. I have seen so many good Kurt Angle matches in, like, the last three months now. In Japan, in America, his match with Nagata, his match with Christian, and this fucking match with Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash cannot move. They had a, a good match here in the main event. Yes. And uh, it really hit me, actually, when I wrote that, uh, as I often do, Nash made his comeback and ran wild, and I realized, no, he didn't. Angle ran wild <laughs> into Kevin Nash repeatedly. <laughs> Indeed. He was awesome this evening, yeah, I, Kurt Angle. I would say Cena could have good matches with Christian and Joe and Nagata. Nash, probably not. <laughs> I would not be interested, interested in seeing that. All I know is I could only watch this, and I can only watch Kevin Nash wrestle. I can only stare at his knees and just, I'm on pins and needles praying they don't fall apart. I don't want to see him hurt again. Yes. He is very scary to watch now. His legs are not even straight lines. <laughs> They're very skinny. He is... It's just bad times. So it's good they do things like sit in the figure four for two minutes. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That, I'm, I'm not, that, I'm, that's not facetious. That's good stuff. So, yes, this was a shockingly good main event. Kevin Nash, there were at least three matches in WWE on, on SmackDown and Impact that were worse than Kevin Nash's match on, on I fucked this up badly. Let's move on. Yes. So Angle speared the post, and then Karen ran down to check on him. And she was pleading... With him not to get back in the ring due to his neck, he backhanded her or something. He, okay. And she fell down. What was supposed to happen, he was just supposed to shove her away. Not not even shove her, but just sort of move past her. And in the process, she bumped to the floor and bled everywhere. I didn't need to see that, by the way. Girls, she should not be bleeding. It's wrong. And and I, I say, people are going to say this is sexist, but this is just the way it is. I always look at it as... Guys are just dumber than girls. Well, that's true. And and guys taking a razor blade and cutting their forehead, you're a, you're a dumb guy. Girls doing it, just wrong. I suggested the idea of Trish doing it for the feud with... No. We, we, if I, you want to use a blood capsule, maybe I'm fine with that. I but, forget uh, who we were talking which about. Which I'm sure Karen used. Oh, of course. I scared Angle did not gig here, but there was a... I forget who it was, but there was a monster heel involved and and it was the concept or it was mickey it was to get mickey over as a psychopath not as a monster but a scary stalker slasher type i think it was it but point being at least then it would have been to a feud between the bleeder and the person who made them bleed karen angle bleeding here served no purpose plus so much for the no man on woman violence that's exactly what this was and anyway the the referee was trying to get aj to leave because he kicked out all of the the seconds during this match the christian and uh, joe and and such, and, and AJ was was going down to tend to Karen, and the ref was trying to get rid of him. AJ wouldn't leave, and so the ref just gave up. He did. When, when Kevin Nash had the pin with the power bomb, the ref was distracted with AJ. When Angle had the pin with the Angle slam, AJ was still out there, and the ref, ref was magically no longer distracted. Just gave up on him. That is bad booking. So uh, anyway, uh, Angle ended up getting a low blow, and the Angle slam for the pin. AJ carried Karen in the back. Like I said, not nearly as entertaining as last week, but uh, it was all right. It was an impact show that was not uh, maddening. I, 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 yes, I, I was not depressed or angry or bitter when it ended. I just wanted to go home. Impact, everybody. Let me tell you how shitty impact was. Hold on. It's like a comedy routine. Let me tell you how bad Impact was. How bad was it? Impact was so bad, I was sending emails to Dave, like, 
every minute <laughs> how much I hated. The first 14 minutes. Do you have minutes, a transcription of some of these? The first 14 minutes of this show, the worst 14 minutes of a show I've ever seen. This was so bad. The badness of this unparalleled. It was infuriating. We're just going to start with Impact. All right, fine. I just, I just want to get on a roll here. We can always talk about these other shows on Sunday if need be. Impact needs our attention. Let me settle in here. <clears throat> Impact was a piece of shit show, everyone. It's a piece of shit with flies all over it. Right down, you. The preview of this show read, and I quote, new exclamation points. That's it. The entire preview for we this We were show. alerted this is not a rerun of Impact, which is the most terrifying thing I can possibly imagine. I don't even know if they had a title this week. I wasn't paying enough attention. I just... God, this was a bad show. All right, so the show started, and Angle was meeting with AJ and Tomko. He said that they all had matches tonight, and they had to win two out of three of them. And if they did, they would have the, quote, man advantage at the pay-per-view. Man advantage, I thought. Man advantage. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. So, first line on the show. No idea what's going on. AJ wanted to know where Karen was. Angle said, well, she's at home where she belongs. And AJ said, I tried to call her. I didn't hear back. And Kurt said, why are you calling my wife? And why are you wearing that stupid crown? Take that fucking thing off. And AJ said, well, Karen gave it to me. And Angle said, listen, get Karen off the brain. I have tips for everybody for our matches tonight. AJ, you're facing Nash. Take out his legs. Hell of a strategy. He said, Tomko, you're facing Joe in a first blood match. Make him lead. Brilliant. Coach Nash. Or Coach Angle, I'm sorry. And uh, told everyone to put out their hands and scream, Angle Alliance on the count of three. <clears throat> this was awesome. This was the only good part about it. Because they all, Angle put his hand out, and AJ begrudgingly put his hand out. And Tomko refused to put his hand out at all. He just sat there. And then Borash put his hand out, and when Angle said Angle Alliance, Borash goes, Angle Alliance! Like it was the greatest moment of his entire life. Yes. I laughed. The last four seconds of this was phenomenal. Everything up to that point was complete and utter bullshit. Yes. It sucked. It made me angry. It made no sense. It made me want to go home. This was when I first sent an email to Dave. <laughs> this was the opening of the show. If you don't count the video recap, which, as usual, would have left any new viewer completely befuddled. I believe it simply said, man advantage. What does that mean? Then we got the second segment. Tonight hyped up the show, said there were three matches tonight, and they would determine who gets the advantage at Destination X. Who gets the advantage <laughs> at Destination X? Send another email today. <laughs> I believe it said, who gets the advantage at Destination X? I said, why won't they tell me? Why is this a secret? What, what does the advantage mean? Here is exactly what my notes say, which I finally need to just do once in a while. Today plugs man advantage, all caps. What advantage? Will it be three on two? Will it be four on three? We don't know. No. No one knows. There's just a man advantage. Dave did quickly respond back and said, they do tell you by the end of the show. That made me feel a little better. <laughs> Reassurance from Dave Meltzer. So... They went to Cornette in the ring with Matt Morgan. He said there would be X Division and women's title matches at the pay-per-view, yet did not say who was in those matches. Fine promotion. Went over the stip matches for tonight, and then he said, and I quote, that the whoever won two matches tonight would go to Destination X, quote, with the advantage. And the team that lost two out of the three would go in with the disadvantage. This was what I flipped out. I wrote in all capital letters. I wish I could have increased the font. I wish I could have made the font red and underlined the font. I just want to know, what is advantage bullshit? What is the what the fuck is the advantage? I thought that this was a six-man match. A six-man tag team match. A six-man tag team match. A somewhat traditional wrestling concept, which we have seen many times before. Now we find out there is a man advantage. The word fuck is all over this report right here, I should add. And then he called out Booker T. And he said that he was going to announce that they were going to have a strap match and there was a stipulation. Yeah. A stipulation to a stipulation match. Right. So, he said rude uh, something or other. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> at the pay-per-view, <clears throat> it is Booker versus Rude. Booker comes out with Tracy. Rude comes out with Peyton. The losing man's woman gets whipped with a strap. Right. 
Who could want to see this? And it will be a strap match first. Yes, and it's just, that's what I sent my la- latest email to Dave. <laughs> Why are you taking two men that can have a good match and handicap them with a strap? I don't know. Because they're fucking retarded. <laughs> you're retarded. So, so, after we watch Booker and Robert Roode whip each other a lot for ten minutes or so, we'll see someone else get whipped after we've already seen a whole bunch of whipping. A woman! And it'll be a woman. A small, defenseless woman will get whipped. Yay. So, then uh, Rude came out, and he said it was pathetic to want to see a woman whipped. True. He said this was against his moral fiber. Cornette was stunned. Cornette was appalled. Yes. He couldn't believe the audacity of this man. Yeah. My, I, I'm cutting you off here, because Robert Rude said, Booker, this is between you and me. There is no need to drag innocent women into this. And I thought, you know, that's a perfectly rational point. Everything he said just makes sense. How did Booker T, the hero, respond to this? Physical violence. Yes. <laughs> he attacked Bobby Roode and began to punch him in the face. They brawled. He, <laughs> Booker T is insistent they drag the innocent women along with them. And then Matt Morgan, all seven feet of him, the next American gladiator, and was boy, unable to break this up. Yeah, <laughs> they, they were held back by these old, middle-aged, pudgy referees. Here's this giant kind of holding his hands up saying, stop fighting, guys. He's going to be the best and shittiest gladiator ever at the same time. This show was off such a start. So, then it was to the back. Crystal, Joe, Nash, and Christian. She said the winner of two out of three matches tonight, quote, wins the advantage at Destination X. We are now 11 minutes into the show. We are not just 11 minutes. We are 11 minutes and four segments, each of which has been based on this fucking advantage. And we still don't know what it meant. I have written here simply in all capital letters, hey, fuck you. That's all I could think at this point. There was a brief explanation of sorts when Crystal said you would get the advantage and you would not be shorthanded. Yes. She said the losers will have to start shorthanded. So, screaming with fury I was at this point. They talked. I didn't care. No. Well, I did, well, personally. Christian and Joe were ranting and raving in a serious manner. And then Nash said, well, I can't follow that. And then proceeded to spoof Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Asking AJ what he was going to do when his 17th time surgically repaired knees came crashing down on him. Okay, so, yeah, so, so Nash closed this by being funny, sure, but also A, making himself look second rate, and B, making himself look crippled. Yeah. This is bad. Now, before that point, it was actually much worse, because Christian was explaining how he had learned from his buddy Kevin Nash how you had to work the system. And to make a long story short, how you had to politic and bat- backstab and bitch and whine to get anywhere in pro wrestling. These men are the heroes! Yeah. These are the ones you're supposed to cheer for. Yes. These, this, this show is such an epic fail at every single level. 14 minutes in, worst show I've ever seen. So, <clears throat> 15 minutes into the show, they finally told us what the winners of this two out of three series got. We are an eighth of the way to the show before they finally announce this to us. The losing team only gets two men in the six man for five minutes. Wow. Oh, no. So you take a guy who will be standing on the apron anyway, and now he won't be on the apron, he'll be in the locker room. So we're supposed to believe that in the first five minutes of a fresh six-man, one of the sides is going to be so badly beaten that they will need that third man. Yes. Yes. Such high stakes here on total nonstop action wrestling. Just crazy. How do they get away with it? It really is unfair. Nash versus AJ in a street fight. Nash can hardly walk, much less wrestle. He was wearing street clothes. I think that they booked this just because he was too lazy to put on gear. That thought crossed my mind. He may have said, hey, guys, got an idea. Me and Styles do a street fight tonight. Sure. We'll go to our jeans and shirts. I'll save my wrists. Yeah, they, they had a match. It went about two minutes, uh, if, you, if you exclude the commercial break. And AJ was beaten the entire time. And then tried to take advantage and was immediately powerbombed for the pin. Almost a complete well, squash. You're, you're, you're somewhat off there. Nash went for the powerbomb, but in the middle of a move, he sold his knee, which resulted in him dropping AJ from basically the same height as the powerbomb anyway. So AJ said, aha, I will drop kick his knee, and he went for a springboard, and Nash caught him and chokeslammed him for the pin. A choke slam. Which uh, it was newsworthy because, uh, newsworthy because I don't think I've ever seen Nash do that before. Well, first time for everything. So there you go. He's diversifying his move set, everyone. This match was utterly useless. Crystal interviewed Black Rain, who had the new best promo in history. He said he was angry at Kaz for die- dyeing his fucking mouse white. And then said at the pay-per-view, he was going to, quote, eat your face off. <laughs> okay, yeah. 
First of all, he made fun of Eric Young for being afraid of monsters. He said, Kaz, you dyed my mouse white. And he held up the mouse. It was still white. Now, we have not seen this mouse for a month. <laughs> it's been in Black Frames position the entire time, which would indicate it would have at least have had some fur growth. But no, it is still white. Which would indicate that Kaz actually dyed this mouse down to the follicle level. <laughs> he bleached its skin. And then he said, he said, who is sitting around? This is a serious question. Who was sitting around and thought, we need to put some heat on this Kaz Black Rain battle? I have an idea. Kaz will dye the mouse white. And yeah. everyone else went, oh! See, that, that, that's what I was going to say. I can see in a brainstorming session someone throwing out something stupid like that. I'm more appalled that everyone else said, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So, I just picture like Black Rain had a black mouse and it died. And they went to the pet store and there was only white mice. And so they had to come up with a storyline. That would be so much better. That's the only thing I could possibly think of. Yeah. Why Why else would this have been done? This was their stupid storyline. And the point is, would anyone have fucking remembered what color the mouse was? No. No. No one at all. No one cares about Black Rain's goddamn mouse. And then as you noted, he... he threatened Kaz with a violent act in which he said, Kaz, I am going to eat your face. There's a long dramatic pause, and finally he growled, off. Yes. All I can think was, imagine if Kaz is watching this promo. <laughs> Kaz watching this and thinking, okay, he's going to eat my face. That's not so bad. Off? He's going to eat my face off? Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah! This show went from shitty awful to hilariously, uh, hilariously, I, funnily, we happily, We watched this about eight times in a row. awful. I was in tears laughing at this. Yes. He was going to eat his face off. Crystal is back, interviewing Jay Lethal and his girl. They haven't gone on their first date yet. It's been a week. Business first, he responded. I don't know what he's been doing for seven days. So, apparently, uh... They're going to have it next week, according to Val. All I got out of this was Jay Lethal was doing his Macho Man impression for a good minute or so. That's all I got. They went from backstage to the announcers, and as soon as they got there, Tanae said, To the back! Yeah. And what did they go to the back for? That had to have just been for me. It was Peyton and Tracy having a horrible brawl. This was the worst fight I ever saw. Those of you who are our age, that being old, you may remember a show from the 1980s called Glow, in which... Women had very horrible wrestling matches. Well, Glow lives. Glow lives in the battle between Tracy and Peyton Banks. They had the worst fight ever. They were giggling. They had they were occasionally slapped at each other. They would take up small objects and throw them at each other and miss and then run away. This was bullshit. It was bad. This was insultingly bad. I was angry at watching this. And then it was to the back or to the front. <laughs> Which is amazing. They already <laughs> in the back. Borash. They went somewhere. Borash with Eric Young. Where the fuck were they? I don't know. It, they were to somewhere else in the back. So yes, Boris was interviewing Eric Young. They were it was poorly lit wherever they were. Eric Young was hiding from monsters. Eric Young made sure to tell us that relic was killer spelled backwards. Thank you, Eric. That makes me hate you more. <laughs> and who cares? <laughs> this somewhere in here, Eric Young began to make wedgie jokes, and this is where I told you I was thinking about throwing my pad at, at your television and you pleaded pleaded with me not to. Yeah. Thankfully I did not. It is Kaz and Young versus Relic and Rain at the pay-per-view. This promo was horrible. That is no bias. Geeks came out for the Battle Royal. Team 3D was the last entrance. They did not make eight, so they had to leave. And uh, the winner of this match got to choose stipulations for their pay-per-views. Came down to uh, Shark Boy. I'm sorry. Came down to uh, Curry Man and Relic. And Curry Man won. And then he began cutting a promo, spouting off uh, Japanese names and Sharky... Claimed he was speaking Chinese. Only Russo could write a line that horrible. And they said the stipulations were that if Team 3D uh, made weight, it would be a fish market street fight. If they did not make weight, they were gone from TNA forever. Or if they lose, they're gone from TNA forever. So, yeah. Hell of a hell of a thing, too, when we have a street fight on this show that sucks. Yes. And then they uh, they say, we're going to have another one on the pay-per-view. Yeah, Yeehaw. Yeah, we have a fish market street fight. I guarantee you they're going to have to stare and they're going to whack each other with them, much like they did in the famous Monty Python sketch. So you may all look forward to paying for that. Eric Young was in this battle royal. So was Relic. So was Black Rain. Now, the gimmick is Eric Young is terrified of these monsters and he's afraid they're going to eat him. Perhaps he eat his face off. 
So the bell rings, and everyone starts fighting. Eric sees the monsters. He's scared, so he just goes over to the corner. He just waits. Yeah. He just avoids them for a while. He did not throw himself over the ropes and, and run to the back to get the fear over. No, he was just kind of nervous, a little, little hesitant, hesitant to get involved. So that was an epic fail. Fortunately, Curry Man was involved. Uh, they did my new favorite spot ever, which was where Curry Man dumped Jimmy Rave. Relic dumped Curry Man, but Curry Man landed on Jimmy Rave and began to dance. Because <laughs> Curry Man was And then he won and he danced. The only worthwhile thing on this entire show was Curry Man. Thank God for him. And, and then, as you noted, Shark Boy came out. And, you know, <laughs> before Shark Boy came out, Curry Man was cutting his promo, doing his gimmick of naming Japanese wrestlers. And that's all he does in a dramatic fashion. And I read a report, probably on the Observer site. Someone was reviewing this show, and they said, Curry Man cut a promo. He mentioned Osamu Nishimura. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perhaps he had deep comments to say, but I'm not sure because I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> Voodoo Queen. Oh, to the back with Team Pron. Voodoo Queen was there. Apologized for mocking her in her premonition last week. Even beautiful people make mistakes, Velvet said. I think she's supposed to be a baby face, but you'd never know. <laughs> So anyway, they said next week, free of charge, they were going to give her a makeover, which was the first good news on this entire that show. That is fantastic news, yes. Dump the voodoo gimmick. Samoa Joe and Tom Coney, first blood match. Basically another fight. Ended up being all right. They had a creative finish. They uh, tried to bust each other open, and finally a chair came into play, and Tom Coney swung it at Joe's head, but Joe blocked it with his elbow. And Joe ends up putting him in the choke, which, of course, makes no sense, but just turn your brain off for a second. Ref rang the bell. Everybody thought Joe won, but then the ref said, no, Joe's elbow is bleeding from the chair shot. And so, yes, Joe lost here. So, there you go. This was fine. Both guys worked hard. Everything made sense, so I had no complaints about this segment at all. At least they got more than two minutes like AJ and Nash. It, well, I don't need to see Kevin Nash wrestling for more than two minutes. Video package with Kip and BG James doing a supposed shoot promo, talking about little things in their relationship that had caused this whole thing to fall apart. and It was fine. Short. I, I like this. B Billy was jealous that Road Dog. Uh, he had better mic skills, but then Billy never got a chance to talk. Meanwhile, Billy was always at the gym, and Road Dog was getting fat when they were a tag team. Just stuff that it makes sense, you know. <laughs> it, it, it it was realistic and believable. That these the, this tag team would have these this kind of these problems. It was fine, but it was too short, and it didn't make me want to see the match at all. So it, it was too short, and like everything else on TNA, too rushed. They are now doing a five-hour program in two hours. Mitchell cut a promo with Messias in the background on his Chris Master stage. Said Abyss was no more, and Abyss will be out for a while, by the way, everybody. Tonight, he, he also said, in reference to uh, Judas Messias, he never drinks wine, which is, of course, a famous line by Bella Lugosi as Dracula. Thanks. We haven't got that far yet. Said well, Abyss done. was no more, taking off his mask, blah, blah, blah. Said tonight it was Rhino against uh, Messias, and yes, Messias did not drink wine or hooch. But he was going to drink Rhino's blood. And we had a Rhino versus uh, Macias, and they had a they had a match. Rhino won clean with the Gore, very basic match, and uh, this may be the last you see of Macias for a while. So there you go. And then uh, Storm hit the ring and super kicked Rhino and mocked him, and then it was to the back. There was of course eight million things going on during this match. It was nothing great. Don't get me wrong. It was a perfectly fine little TV match, but it occurred to me there was no reason for this show to suck. <laughs> they have so many good wrestlers that they just, uh, this show should be good every week, and instead it, it, it hurts my heart every single week. Well, the pay-per-views are good. And the uh, house Unless they shows. Do fish market street fight. Crystal was with Kong and Melissa, who read a prepared statement that Gail would feel the wrath of Kong. And this led to LAX coming in and having a stare down with Hernandez, which led to nothing. You know, we've talked about Kong facing off against men and killing them. We thought this was a great idea. The first guy I would have her face off with would not be Hernandez. Yeah. There's a million geek we're off with. She doesn't need to square off with the guy whose only thing he has is that he's big and scary. Then we had Kong versus Salinas, vampire's girlfriend. Kong beat the piss out of her. Baddest power bomb. She put her elbows down. This I girl. noticed that too. <laughs> Amateurs in there with Kong is a bad idea. Yes. And uh, I don't think anyone was killed, but that was pretty scary. Yes. Everyone, when you're taking a bump, don't put your elbows down. You will get hurt. To the back, Gail and ODB, friends again. They were going to beat up Kong, and then Crystal tried to stir shit by asking which would get the pin, and Gail said, the better wrestler. And ODB said, that's what I wanted to hear. Who cares? So to review, 
There was going to be a three-way at the pay-per-view with Kong, ODB, and Gail Kim. Kong is evil. Gail and ODB are good. The good wrestler's plan is to gang up and double-team the heel two-on-one. Thus, when Awesome Kong fights them both off, she will look dominant and cool and everyone will cheer for her. Remember when I said the show was good for two weeks? When did that happen? I don't I don't actually remember that. <laughs> Was, well, it was uh, four weeks ago. It was good. Then three weeks ago, it was good. There was, there was that period where they, they, they had a good show, but it was separated by a week because the, the last half of one show was good and the first half no, of the next show was good. No, that was a long time ago. Four weeks ago, they had a good show, and then three weeks ago, they had an average show, and then last week, or no, I don't remember. This show this, sucks. This show's bad. This is a terrible, terrible show. Just go to thefightnetwork.com or the figure4.com. I got a. I wrote a big column about Impact and how awesome it was. And that was like two weeks ago, and everybody thought I was being paid off. Well, checks have stopped coming or something, because this sucked. We had uh, Christian versus Angle in a non-title cage match. Only way you can win is to escape the cage. No pinfalls or submissions. Makes it tough to have a good angle match without pinfalls or submissions. But they had the best match they possibly could with that handicap. Welcome to TNA, having a good match despite a handicap. And uh, anyway, they, they uh, did a bunch of stuff. And uh, let's see. Oh, instant replay. Or Actually, they had a photo finish with no instant replay. They just had Earl Hebner saying Christian won. And then they had a replay, but it was a replay of the original camera angle, so we couldn't see a goddamn thing. Welcome to TNA. And then uh, the Angle Alliance came out and beat up Christian, and then Tomko padlocked the cage shut, and Joe was too fat to climb in, and Angle... And, uh, and Nash is too old. Nash is too old, so they just beat on Christian till the show went off the air. And just think about this. Your babyface team, one of them just got beaten up, one of them's too old, and one of them's too fat to get in. And meanwhile, they're going, to start, the and they're going to start the pay-per-view with a man advantage. They They won. They did win. They're no. To, yes. No, they're, I didn't even thought of that. They're going to start beyond two. The baby faces, the heroes, are going to start with an unfair edge. By this point in the show, I was just numb. I suspect this match was pretty good. I could not even enjoy it. I was emotionally exhausted. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Nash won. Correct. Tomko won. Right. They were on opposing teams, so at this point it was one to one. And Christian won. So Christian and Nash are on the team, and they both won. Therefore, their team won two matches. Therefore, they win the man advantage. I can't even believe this. Something's got to be wrong. This is the company that sucks so much. I never even. I didn't even think about this because I didn't even think that this could be possible. You know what I mean? <laughs> they found a new and inventive way to. I suck. didn't even. When the show went off the air, I didn't even think. That possibly the baby faces could have won the advantage. It didn't even enter my mind. Welcome to hell. This show was bad. <laughs> it was a terrible show put on by a terrible company. The finish of the main event, Angle and Christian both took a pretty dang high bump off the gauge of the floor. Didn't need to see that. That could have been done safer. And just anyone taking any risk on TNA always bothers me because the end product always sucks regardless. So stop it, everyone. Just stop it. The show sucks. I cannot believe the baby faces have the advantage at the pay-per-view. Yeah, the baby, the fat guy, the old guy, and the cheater. <laughs> Why would you buy this show? I wouldn't. I don't want to. If you said right now we're not getting the pay-per-view, I would high-five you. I can't believe how bad. This is the go-home show. It was. This was the worst go-home there's ever, ever been. What show, what match are you excited to see? Are you excited to see Christian, Joe, and Nash versus two of AJ, Tom, I'm not and excited Kurt? to see anything, and I don't even know what's on the show. Are you excited to see Gale versus ODB versus Kong? No. Are you excited to see, the fuck else is there? My, uh, Lethal versus Petey Williams? No. Are you excited? I believe there's I can't a, believe you're remembering these. I, I, the fish market fish fight. The fish market fish fight. No. Are you excited? I only know this, but I, re I read this somewhere, and for some reason, I, I was so curious as to know what was going to be on this, this pay-per-view I was going to buy, I thought I would look into it and see. I had to do research to find out. There's like a triple threat with LAX and the Rocket Rave Infection and, and the Machine Guns. Who, by the way, I forgot about this. The Machine Guns, the best tag team they have, the hottest new act they have, who were utterly, completely buried at the end of the 3D feud, then they do this maid show on MTV, which I didn't watch it, but somebody might have, somebody somewhere may have seen that show and said, hey, I think I'll tune in, I'll tune in to TNA to watch the Machine Guns. And they saw them in a battle royal, wherein they were the first two guys eliminated. Yeah. 
Fuck this company. God, I can't wait till they die. <laughs> I have something fun for everybody. This email simply reads, My head hurts. I-E-T-N-A. This is the stipulations for Sunday so far. Okay? Okay. Let's see. Main event. The Angle Alliance versus Samoa Joe, Christian Cage, and Kevin Nash. Stipulation. By winning the series of bouts on Thursday's Impact, Samoa Joe, Kevin Nash, and Christian Cage will have a three-on-two advantage for the first five minutes of the main event. After five minutes, Team Angle will be at full strength. Team Angle gets to choose among them who must wait five minutes to enter the bout. Great. Stand by your man strap match. Booker T versus Robert Roode. I forgot about that just a second ago. Strap match. If Booker T wins, Tracy Brooks gets to lash Peyton Banks ten times with a leather strap. If Rude wins, Banks gets to put the strap to Brooks. The Latin America Exchange versus the Motor City Machine Guns versus Rock and Rave Infection. Stipulation. Winner of the bout becomes the number one contender to the TNA Tag Team titles. Does that one need a stip? Yeah. X Division Championship. Black Machismo, Jay Lethal versus Maple Leaf Muscle Petey Williams. Stipulation. No. Oh. Scott Steiner's favorite freak, Rocker Khan, will be in Petey Williams' corner for the bout. What? <laughs> yes. Why? So she can cheat. She could do a run in. That would, that would break TNA code of conduct. Fish market street fight. Shark Boy and Curry Man versus Team 3D. Stipulation. If Team 3D can't make weight for the bout, they will be fired from TNA Wrestling. TNA Management Director Jim Cornette has decreed that Team 3D will not be fired if they lose the bout, only if they can't make the weight. Well, that's a change. Errors. This sucks. You know, Comcast is better than them. It's official. No. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. If we wanted to talk for an hour about the TNA pay-per-view, we couldn't. Because Comcast fucked up and we missed the first hour. Yeah, Comcast decided that they were not going to record the show after I'd recorded it. And I fucking knew. I knew when I set the DVR and left for wrestling. I knew I was going to come back and be disappointed. It was not even a question in my mind. It was like, I'm leaving and I have no control over this, so it will be fucked up. Period. And sure as shit, that's exactly what happened. The It, it uh, recorded the pre-show. Yes, the free part. And then uh, 31 minutes into the recording, it just froze. Not to be repaired. We cannot fast forward. We cannot skip ahead. We cannot let it play at regular speed. It would not play the actual pay-per-view portion of the recording. Welcome to motherfucking Comcast. So, I called these assholes. It was, by the way... Actually, even even before that, you tried to just order the replay. It was at this point about a quarter to nine, so we would have missed the first 45 minutes. You tried to order the replay for your, for your through your the remote, and it said, No, you can't. Call this phone number. Yeah, just can't do it. Fuck you, Comcast. So I called the phone number. Oh, no, it's even better, actually. It's 1-800-COMCAST, but of course I had to use Vinny's phone because mine was dead, and his phone doesn't have the letters over the number. No. So I couldn't spell Comcast without the damn letters. So then I had to go on the Internet and find the Comcast number, and I finally called him up, and and, uh, and the guy answers, and I said, Hi, I ordered the 5 o'clock show. It didn't work. Can you please put the 8 o'clock show on? Why didn't you order it from the TV? Well, I couldn't. Okay. Actually, it says you haven't ordered the 5 o'clock one. I said, I know I ordered the 5 o'clock one, because not only did I, I order it, but it says it recorded the entire two hours, yet it won't play the entire two hours. So, long story short, he finally ordered it for me, and we, we missed the first 45 minutes of this show. And if there were impact, I wouldn't have cared. But it's a pay-per-view, and apparently the first two matches were good. If you want the results, they're on the front page of the website. I've already forgotten what they were. LAX won, and something else happened. Oh, P.D. Williams lost. Or won. Or lost. Who was the champion? Jay Lethal was the champion. He retained. Okay. There was a lot of bullshit involved. You don't say. <clears throat> a lot of guys interfered. And girls that look like guys. Relic and Gold Dust against Eric Young and Kaz. They had a match. Of course, the worked over Kaz. And Eric Young was on the apron begging for a hot tag. Kaz finally made it. He got in the ring and then realized, oh, no, monsters. And he ran away. Everybody booed. I thought, this is an epic fail. But then he came back out in a superhero costume. The announcers, not even for a moment, pretended like they didn't know who it was. Now, this is not like a Robin mask where it only covered his eyes, or a Superman where he takes off the sunglasses and now he's not Clark Kent anymore, or the glasses. 
He had a full head mask, like Mil Master or Sasanto. And body. Yeah, and body. He put on a, 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 a top to his costume and he, a full head mask, obscuring his identity. And they all immediately knew, there's Eric Young. He was exactly as obscured as Chris Daniels is right now. But they don't know Chris Daniels is Curry Man. No. And everyone here, I'm sure, to prove me wrong, will say, well, Brian, he had EY on his, his superhero costume. Well, everyone knows that Chris Daniels is Curry Man. It's the same thing. Anyway, he ran wild, and, uh, of course, they cut him off. This company. <laughs> yes. Now, the whole point of this was that he was scared of monsters, and if he had confidence, he could fight them. So he got confidence through the superhero gimmick, and then he killed anyway. Yeah. And luckily, he still won in the end, but they, they just had to keep adding more shit before they went to the finish, as opposed to doing what just would have worked, which is him running out, running wild, getting the pin. This was way too complex. And he ended TNA. up beating both of them anyway. Yes. He ended up in a, in a fantastic spot. We have seen Eric Young before do the double DVD with like a, a cruiserweight, an X Division guy and a girl. He took the six foot six Black Rain and the 250 pound relic, two very big men, and he hooked them both up on their shoulders and dumped them with a DVD. Holy Christ, that was impressive. Yeah. That was manly. So, uh,. God, my notes here just end with, bad guys tried something. They did. It failed. That's true. That's what they tried. They tried something and got beat. I should also note that Relic has one costume. He has a black and red headdress or face paint and then a black and red <clears throat> trunks and black and red boots. So what colors did young Frankie Kazarian wear for this match? Black and red. Damn. The match began. I looked up. I thought for, at first they were on the same team. And they started a fight. And I was confused. I thought, oh, that's right. Kaz is a good guy. So, way to go, Frankie. Way to co- color coordinate this evening. Angle Alliance was screaming at Cornette about the photo finish deal at Impact. Apparently, they got, they got another angle, and it showed that Kurt hit first. So, Cornette said he'd go handle the situation. He ran into Team 3. There was a lot of yelling and screaming. They said that Cornette should be drug tested. Ha, ha, ha. And then uh, Cornette stormed out. Yippee. I don't know. Maybe this made more sense if you saw the opening of the show, but I was just confused. Awesome Kong, ODB, and Gail Kim. Actually, had a hell of a little match here. Uh, three, Lots of three-way spots. Actually, it started out with a lot of spots where one person would be left outside. The other two would do a bunch of stuff and then uh, broke down and all three of them in the ring together. Uh, ODB and Gale working together for a while, but then not working together when it was time to get a pin and that sort of thing. And finally, Kong crushed Gale with a big splash off the middle rope. So ODB broke it up. Uh, Kong's manager tripped up ODB, and then ODB got hit with the implant buster and the awesome bomb for the pin. Hell of a little match right here. Two thumbs up. Indeed. Uh, it did begin, as noted, with the the two cowardly bay faces ganging up on the heroic heel who fought back against overwhelming odds, and then suddenly she disappeared. Awesome Kong, the unstoppable monster, was dumped outside and just took a break for a while. I know they wanted to uh, have take turns with one person outside while the other two did stuff in the ring, but I would have had Kong's break come later. Not in the first three minutes. Then later, they did a bit where uh, they had Kong on the ropes. They had a rocket, and so ODB went to get her flask for some liquid courage, as they said, and she took a swig, and she did a little dance, and Gail's like, I want some, too, and she took a swig, and she did a little dance, and everyone went crazy, and they went up, and they hit this double drop kick, and their timing was a little bit off, but it still looked cool, and everyone went crazy, and then Don West said, I like it that they didn't hit at the same time. Don West enjoyed the fact that they botched this. And then he pointed it out to all of us. Why would he enjoy that they didn't hit at the same time? I don't know. I don't have any answer to what that could be. He enjoyed the fact that it was imperfect. It was flawed, he said, and he liked it that way. Wow. The match was very fun. Don West well, is a fucking explains moron. why he likes this company. <clears throat> it does, actually, doesn't it? And we had uh, Rhino cutting an Elevation X promo, which was actually awesome, especially at the end when he said, Was that okay? <laughs> They left it in. It was it was a it was a good promo. I didn't like the fact that it was cut atop the elevation next deal, and he was just walking around. He mm-hmm. had his hands in his pockets. He was pacing. His t- voice tone was good, and what he was saying was good. But where it was made it seem like being on top of the X was not a big deal at all. Cornette was in the ring to make the announcement of the main event. He said they'd watched the tape, and it was very clear in slow motion that Angle's feet actually touched the ground first. He said, however, that Angle was demanding that they go against a hundred years of pro wrestling history and tradition. A history that did not involve instant replay. Yeah, because Lord knows there's never been instant replay in pro wrestling before. It's an unheard of event. He did not want to set a legal precedent, he said. He polled the fans, asking them if they should overturn the decision. And uh, they said, no, don't. So he said, fine, decision stands. Wow. 
What? What the hell? I like... Would it have been that hard to just have the heels have the advantage at the beginning of the match? <laughs> I like that he wants to stick to the 100 years of tradition of incompetent officiating. That's basically what he said. Listen, pros and officials have always been screw-ups. Why should they be good now? We like to keep them at their low level. Keep our standards low. No matter what you say about our tag match tonight, it had better psychology than the main event on this show. Oh, yeah. Just want to make that sure. There's a better executed. <clears throat> Team 3D, Shark Boy, and Curry Man in a Fish Market Street fight. They changed the steps. Oh, Jesus Christ. It started out where if Team 3D did not make weight or lost the match, they were gone forever. Right. Then it became, if they don't make weight, they're gone forever. Okay. Then as they're weighing in, they said, if they made weight, they'd never have to be weighed again. Right. This is what happens when you book a program and you don't know where you're going. You just book it and then decide you'll figure it out later. Just make stuff up and it never makes sense. You 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 get shit, is what happens. And the stiffs were that if Team 3D did not make weight, they would uh, be fired. They both managed to make weight. And Don found this to be bullshit. Don suspected the scale may not be on the up and up. Yeah. He thought there was tomfoolery afoot. Johnny Devine was there with ho-hos to hand out to the guys afterwards. They got rolled up, and the ho-hos flew high in the air. And as a fish market street fight, there were there were it was a market set up outside with boxes with fish. Fish. Great, great big fish. I saw striped bass, probably some salmon, some trout. These are all in the 10 to 15-pound range. These were real dead fish. Real, real dead fish in there real... There were dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> what? Corpses. There was, there were, the bodies had hit the floor in the aisle of TNA Destination X. It gets better. They hit each other with the fish. Mm-hmm. There were fish guts all over the place. Okay, I'm going to stop you here. It started, a curry man grabbed a fish, used it as a club. Okay, I'll buy that. It's kind of heavy. It hit you, you go, ow. Shark Boy grabbed a fish, and he turned to Brother Devon, and he used the fish as a battering ram. He has a thrusting weapon, and he stabbed Devon Dudley in the belly with maybe, this fish. Maybe it was a swordfish. This looked phony. Could have been a swordfish. I don't think it was. I'll bet it was. Well, they, we're not going back to check, Brian. <laughs> they just saw the... I, I, I think it was a, a, your typical... Quiet down, you. They threw, they threw fish into the fucking crowd. Don't act like you know fish because you work at Fish Fishing and Any News. You're a copy editor. <laughs> I know a little Stop about fish. bullshitting. They were throwing fish into the crowd. People were throwing fish back. Bubba or Devon threw a fish particularly hard and hit a woman right in the face. She was, in fact, given ice and taken to the back. She uh, she was injured by a flying fish in this match. They uh, they continued to uh, beat on each other with, with various devices and such. And uh, then they broke down into doing a bunch of near falls in the ring. This ended up going on a little bit too long. But uh, Divine hit the ring and accidentally powdered Bubba. So Sharky gave Divine a stunner. The Dudleys tried the 3D on Curry Man, but Curry switched with Devon, and Bubba, who could not see, hit the 3D anyway on his own partner. And then Sharky pinned Devon. Good finish. It was actually a really creative good finish. It was a pretty fun match. It was fucking weird. It was very weird, and it was... I did not need to see dead animals destroyed on a show ever again. (laughs) Or fish guts everywhere. As Don West noted, the whole building stank like fish. It was... uh, you, you didn't even mention the point where a curry man procured a fishing pole and put a ho-ho at the end of it. God. And he went fishing for Bubba Ray, and he caught one. Yes. And then Bubba Ray had the hook in his mouth because he could not resist the ho-ho, and uh, he got out of that somehow. Thankfully, he, they did not actually stick a fishing hook into his mouth. That's I'll tell you how he got out of it. No one knows. <laughs> it was not because on camera. They, they put a fishing pole with a ho-ho on it. It caught Bubba, and Curry Man was reeling him into the ring, and as Bubba was almost in the ring, this was when the director decided to cut to Devon running into a guardrail outside. <laughs> yeah, we've seen 9,000 we times saw, before. It, we never saw what happened. So, it, yes. It built to a spot that was a mystery. So this is this is a wacky comedy brawl. Okay, fine. That's fine what it was. And then they started to do WrestleMania main event near falls. Like, like there was life and death on the line in this Fish Market Street fight. Whatever. And then it, 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 from beginning to end, this had to go 25 minutes. It went forever. It was it never it was never bad. It was never dragged or was boring. But did they need to give this that much time? Would this not have been better at 15 or 20 minutes? There was a man in the crowd, I believe from Survivor, some random guy who they didn't nearly identify enough. And Bubba shoved him. They almost got into a pull-apart. I guess this was supposed to be a heavy, heated angle. 
But then the celebrity decided to do the shark boy hand signal by putting a fin on his head. I swear to God almighty this happened. And uh, that ended that. Credibility dead. You know, I always remember the very first Lawrence Taylor angle when he was at ringside and he's Bam Bam Bigelow. I think it was the Royal Rumble and he got pinned. And LT's laughing. And Bat- Bigelow walks by and he stares. And LT's laughing, having a good time. He stands up to shake his hand. And Bigelow gives him a big old shove. And LT stands up. He's a house of fire. Everyone's holding him back. And, and Bigelow walks away. And holy shit, it was great. It, it looked like these two big scary dudes got in a real fight. And LT finally calms down. And everyone knows he's calm down. He sits down and his... His agent's there, or his manager, his assistant's, whatever, and, and he points and he points to Bigelow and he says, he's crazy, that guy. And I thought, fake. This is the same thing here. When you put the shark fin on his head, fake. Can you imagine if in that big first pull apart where Mayweather punched out Big Show, if instead he raised his hand in the air and went, ah! Mayweather, you mean. Huh? Or, or Show, actually, either one. No, if Mayweather had done this. Yes. Well, if Show had gotten punched and had responded by standing up and going, oh, with a hand, that also would have sucked. No, the celebrity has to do it. Uh, the celebrity made the fish thing. I see. That would have sucked Mayweather more. would have would have punched him and then raised his hand like he was going to do a choke slam. That would have sucked. That would have been fucking retarded. Not that this mattered anyway, but that was stupid. Then we had uh, a meeting with Angle and his crew. Long story short, uh, Karen's going to be back on Impact with a bombshell. Yeah, tune in Thursday. Can't wait. Wow. Robert Roode and Peyton, or Robert Roode with Peyton against Booker with Tracy in a shitty strap match where the losing woman got strapped. Yeah. Hey, we discussed this on the after on the Impact show we did uh, Friday night when we reviewed Impact. We were going to watch a strap match in which men would get whipped and then watch women get whipped, which kind of killed the second step there. Why would I want to see a woman get whipped, especially if I just seen two guys whip the hell out of each other? Apparently, the guys got together and figured this out on their own because this was a strap match in which there was no whipping. Yeah. There was, I believe they used the strap as a weapon to choke once or twice, but they never whipped each other, not one time. And I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> it made the match, I mean, so they were just joined together is what it came down to. So all, all it did was limit the stuff they could do. And it, it, it helped because it got the post angle stuff over better. It hurt because I had to watch two guys tied together and not use what they were tied together with. The strapping of the woman was appalling. That's uh, that's also true. It wasn't. They strapped the shit out of Tracy, and they made sure to zoom in on her face to show her crying. Yeah, not screaming, not pro wrestling selling, not even that, not not even baby face defiance and rage. No, she was sobbing. Yes, this 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 was basically a snuff film they showed us here in this wrestling pay per view. There are some writers in this company with some severe. Issues with women, and we had to watch it here on this show. No fun. And they whipped the shit out of her ten times, and then kept whipping her. And then uh, Robert Rude made sure to whip her for good measure. And uh, finally, uh, Charmel ran in with a strap and did a Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonation. It was Stone Cold Charmel. She whipped Booker, or she she whipped uh, Rude. She whipped Peyton. She whipped the refs. She whipped security. I think she went after the announcers. She was on a rampage. She whipped Jim Cornette. She <laughs> whipped Cornette, who did a funny sell. It was, yeah. Just the stuff with Tracy was so brutally bad. We now know that TNA is pro-torture as long as they can film it and put it on pay-per-view. They're pro-torture on women, actually. Yes, yes. Yes. This was wretched, wretched programming, except for Charmel's return, which was actually pretty good. And, uh, yeah, that was that. Then we had more shit. We had James Storm and Rhino, Elevation X. They uh, started in the ring. They had a hardcore match. Of course, it's TNA. The refs are completely impotent. So nobody was like, hey, you guys got to get up there. They were just like, oh, you don't want to be up there? Well, okay. And they wrestled in the ring and such. And finally, <clears throat> Jackie started climbing. Rhino went after her. I guess James Storm went to make the save. She climbed down the other side. So we had Storm and Rhino on the scaffold. They did not do a thing Storm ended up uh, in the scaffold. He climbed underneath into the, the wiring or whatever you want to call it. and, and the structure. Uh, they finally uh, stomped on him, and, and he took a back bump from the bottom of the structure through a table to the ring. The easiest bump you've ever seen. And they sold it like he was dead. He was carted off. This was quite awful. This was the only thing keeping anyone watching was the, the threat that someone might imminently die. If you watch this knowing that no one died... You would have been so miserably bored. Two men 
on their knees punching each other. I don't necessarily blame them. I don't think I would have done anything different. It's just a stupid, stupid, stupid match. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. The, the, the Storm climbed up there at the beginning. He climbed back down. He left his beer up there, so Rhino threw beers at him for a while. and Hit him in the face. <laughs> hit him in the face of the beer. That had to suck. And it was just it was, it was a spectacle. They, they they tried to get as many scared fans in the crowd as they could on camera. And w- without the spectacle, this was absolutely, completely, utterly worthless. James Storm is awesome, but my God, has he been in some bad matches. The, the, the blindfold cage match where the blindfolds came off? Oh, Christ. I'll never forget that one. And then we had uh, the main event, Joe and Christian and Nash against Tomko, AJ, and Angle, where Angle didn't come out for five minutes. I'm still trying to figure out how much danger a man can possibly be in for the first five minutes of a six-man tag. What the fuck? What damage could be done? So, oh, by the way, I should note that after the uh, strapping angle, there were loud chants of fire Russo. I cackled. Anyway, so uh, Angle couldn't come out for five minutes, and so they got the heat on Tomko. That's right. The three baby faces beat on the one heel. Correct. Beat the hell out of him for a while. And uh, finally, with 20 seconds left on the clock, Joe went on the ramp and waited for Angle. They had a hell of an MMA-style brawl for about 30 seconds and then ended up in the ring, and it became a match. They were running low on time, so it was a very high-impact, fast-paced match. Nash got the hot tag and, and stood in a wild manner. Everybody bonked into him. <laughs> he stood wild. He did. Yeah, that's our new phrase. He, uh, Kevin Nash stood wild. Angle hit a power bomb. AJ drop kicked, uh, or he hit Angle with a power bomb. AJ drop kicked the knee and more stuff. Joe finally uh, went for the muscle buster, but Angle gave him a low blow, and then all three heels hit their finisher on him. And Tomko covered, and Joe kicked out. And then uh, Baby Faces laid out heels. Joe and Tomko ended up in the ring together. Tomko hit a lariat, and Joe did the uh, the Japanese-style uh, no-sell, jump to your feet, kabashi up. And then he uh, immediately put Tomko in the rear naked choke for the pin, or the submission. Tomko tapped out. And uh, the idea of this, this match was to give Joe the mega push because uh, – He's got the title shot at the next pay-per-view and probably he's going to win the belt, and so they had to strap the rocket to him. And the last three minutes of this match were perfect in that regard. So uh, thumbs up to uh, this match. It was a good match to end it, and it was a clean finish, I should know. There was no ref bump, no, no interference, no, no. run-in, no bullshit. He just beat a man clean. There was a ref bump earlier in the strap match. We neglected this. The finish came when the ref took a bump. And handcuffs were involved, and Robert Roode punched Booker T with handcuffs and pinned him. Yeah. You couldn't have a clean finish in the strap match. No. They did do a clean finish in the main event. They did let Joe kick out of everything. I, I didn't think it was weird he didn't pin Angle, because now he, he pinned Tomko. Okay? Fine. I guess he was guaranteed the title match anyway. He may as well leave Angle unpinned until then. But it, it just seemed like it would have been led more directly to that event if, if he had beaten Angle here. But it was fun. It was fine. The all the bullshit involving the man advantage and who would get it, which continued even on to most of the show, ended up meaning not a goddamn thing. It was all just an excuse to have Joe standing on the ramp when Angle came out. Really? You couldn't have just done this anyway. You, you couldn't, couldn't just introduce the baby faces, have the heels come out, and have Joe be waiting for Angle at the bottom of the ramp and have them fight. You couldn't have Angle waiting for Joe. You could have ending Angle waiting for Joe. It's not like uh, Booker T wasn't waiting for Robert Roode or vice versa. Roode was waiting for Booker. They've done that, so... These guys are just morons. If they, if they thought that that was, that was the only reason was it would make more sense for Joe to be waiting for Angle, then really, that makes more sense than a fucking two-on-three handicap match with the fucking baby faces having the advantage. Getting the heat on Tomko. Shits. God, you guys are stupid Tonko sometimes. Tomko fighting back heroically against overwhelming odds. It is am- off against three men. It is amazing how you when you uh, focus on a man and, and give him a clean win over multiple opponents, he gets over. So this was a big success. Although I will sit here and guarantee, in the words of Vince McMahon, I guarantee that prior to the next pay-per-view, Angle will pin Joe. That's certainly likely. No question <laughs> in my mind about I, I, it. Certainly the favorite to happen. Yeah. So. That's very likely. So the show, I guess I had fun watching it. I, I can't really encourage anyone to spend their money on a replay. Although it's not fair because we didn't see the first two matches, which apparently were good. Okay, so, yeah, in our limited view, thumbs in the middle, I guess leaning up. Yeah. It ended on a good note, so that's, that's very important. So I guess that's everything. I just want to 
to read the last four words of this report. All right. It's actually not that bad. It, it, this, is, this is a very serious statement that I'm making, and, and I'm just... The four words were, a mess as usual. A mess as usual. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, it means the show is very hard to follow, and week in and week out, it leaves people confused. This show is, it, what it means is this show is usually a mess, and this was yet another. Right. How can you so repeatedly create such bad programming? I don't This is the know. question that I have when I watch this show. I mean, listen, I'll be, I'll be honest. This show may be a good, good example right now, this Brian and Vinny show. Sometimes we do bad shows, all right? Usually, in fact. <laughs> well, no. I mean, we often may think it's a bad show, but, but, but our, our audience seems to appreciate the program. But sometimes there's a show that none of the audience appreciates, okay? Sure. I'm fine with that. Sometimes you just do a bad show, all right? I, I agree. To be so fucking consistently bad boggles my mind. <laughs> You know what I mean? We also do good shows. Like if if I if I did a show and everyone said, "Boy, this show's horrible," that that was a horrible show you guys did. And then I did another show and they're like, "God damn, that show was horrible." And then I did a third show and they're like, "These shows are horrible over and over." I'd be like, "Okay, seriously, what the fuck am I doing wrong here? What needs to be changed about this?" And you would change something. I would try to do something. Yes. Instead, week after week. After week, this show is a mess. Now, I will say, there was some good stuff on this show. They have a direction. That's good. That's true. If they continue in this direction, their all-cage pay-per-view may do 30,000 buys or potentially more. That's good. Okay? I will, I will grant you that. Okay? But that does not mean the rest of your show is any good. So, to me... If you can figure out some way to do something good, such as what they're doing with Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle, if you have it in there to book that correctly, what the fuck's are wrong with you for the rest of this stuff? I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's just like Global Impact. Everybody knew that show was good, so how can you consistently book a show the exact opposite of that that people hate week after week? I don't know. How could they have done Awesome Kong so awesome for so long and get their their... World champion so poorly for so long. How can they get Tonka over almost by accident? Well, that's the answer. It, <laughs> it was, was by, by accident. accident. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how they do the same bullshit every week. Why? I don't know why it gets no better, and frankly, I don't know why we watch. <laughs> Which brings me to my speech. I didn't want to watch the show. I showed up. I was in a bad mood. I grabbed a beer. I sat down. We started watching the show. I wrote down here, usually at the top of the notes, I write down the name of the show. For example, here I write down Impact. I see here I have written down, and we watched this last night, so I've had 24 hours to calm down. It really says it's the worst show I've ever seen. <laughs> they began to air the recap of the uh, Destination Next pay-per-view. Now, it was its, it's, it's usual over arty self, very pretentious, very snooty. <laughs> this pissed me off. It did. It should have. But I will say this. At least they gave it like a minute. <laughs> That's remarkable. There but was a, they, it was a minute of bullshit. Well, it's a minute of bullshit, but it was at least, usually the recaps are just 20 seconds of, like, white noise. Where you just, you, you just see flashing lights and images, and you have no idea what it all means. This one, at least... I know most everybody here listening to this has seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm -hmm. If you just imagine, like, the last... I, I, just the, the last half, I'll say, of, of Return of the King. I can't say the last half hour, because... I don't even know, but, you know, if you see the last half of that film and you listen to the, the music that they do and it, it, it's, it's classical music and there's chicks singing and it's very dramatic and, and, you know, if you've been following the films, they came out in 2001 and the last one came out in like 2004. This is a long journey that viewers had been on. And at the end of this long fucking journey, at the end of this long fucking movie, this epic film, this music fits. Okay? Sure. They use the same goddamn music to recap Destination X. What? A show that was, at its best, okay. Offended me, that did. Well, that's reasonable. That is actually perfectly reasonable. Here's what offended, offended me. As I was sitting there thinking about how I didn't want to watch the show, I thought I would just get through it. They were flashing various sayings on the screen. 
advice, slogans, philosophy. Sure. They were showing philosophy on the screen, one of which read, and I quote, we are masters of our fate. <laughs> that didn't. Wow. I, 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 I stopped watching the show, I put it on the beer, and I began to write. And here's what I wrote. Why do we do this? I've long passed the point of having anything valuable to say about wrestling. Me watching this shit lends nothing to the program. That being this show we're doing right now. It serves only to punish me. How about we chop my pee in half? I no longer have to watch this crap. I will just show up, you call me fat for an hour, and we'll call it good. <laughs> Would anyone even notice? I don't, by the way, I'm not even sending that offer. An angry man. Slightly reconsider this. But that's all I could think about was all the other things to do in the world, and I'm sitting here watching this program as I do every week. Every Thursday, do you realize every Thursday, Brian, for 2008 <laughs> is going to be shitty? Because we're going to end watching Impact? Well, well, perhaps it'll get better. No, it won't. <laughs> this company's been around for six years now. Yeah. In fact, it's always been crappy. Not oh, this crappy. They, they, they've had their highs and lows. Mostly lows. <laughs> this, was a, this was a bad show. I, I, I have seen worse. I've seen worse. At least I've every year now, on a certain Thursday, we'll get the annual Christmas show. With a barbed wire tree. <laughs> barbed wire Christmas tree. If it all leads up to that show at the end of the year... I'll be fine. You know what? It's like I've been sentenced to prison, only I don't know what my release date is. Well. Every Thursday, perhaps for the rest of my life, I'm going to have to watch Impact. It won't be for the rest of your life. <laughs> I can't imagine such a thing. Although, with your life, this, this is a possibility. Unless I take my life in two weeks. <laughs> you could die at any time. Let's talk about this shitty show and get it over with. Cornette was in the ring to announce the main event for lockdown, All Cage Show. He signed the most eagerly anticipated TNA World Heavyweight Championship match in memory. In memory. Because no one in the booking committee can remember anything more than three weeks ago. Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe. Tanae said, this is the one we've been waiting for. I, I do not know why. If, if they feel that their TV has made us want to see this match, and that we are eagerly awaiting it, then they have failed. Because we don't. If this is just a pro wrestling announcer's, Speak it out of their ass, as they always do, then fine. He also signed Lethal Lockdown, which is basically war games. Called out Christian, captain number one. Tomko, captain number two. Don't ask why. He said that uh, he was going to explain the rules. They had till March 27th, the biggest night in Impact history, to come up with rosters for the respective teams. For those of you wondering, because it was not explained, March 27th, they're going live. Yes. Yeah. Not a single fucking mention was made of this. He merely told us that March 27th was the biggest night in the history of Impact, as if we all knew. And I didn't. You didn't. I shouted, what are you talking about? And I had to explain it to you. And there was a pause, because you were thinking about it, and you thought, they're going live. Yes. I just stared at the screen dumbfounded for a while, and I, I continued my rant. Yeah. They, they got into a brawl. Kevin Nash ran, literally ran to the ring to break this up. And as Kevin Nash ran, seriously, running on two feet, and leaped up onto the apron. <laughs> if you want to call it that. As soon as he leaped up on the apron, to the back. Here is how I have recapped this entire segment. Something happened with Tom Cohen Christian. I don't give a shit about it. Right now, there are plays going on. Opera, orchestra, art museums, dozens of bars in Linwood alone. I am watching Impact. You would not be at a uh, fucking art museum on a Thursday night. Come on now. Can I go next week? I'll go to an art museum. <laughs> I'll do a report. They'll make you tape this, and you'll have to watch that as well. No, that defeats the purpose then. Karen had showed up. Moresh wanted to know what her bombshell was. She said she'd tell us all later. Shit with Karen and Borash. <laughs> Movies, topless bars, casinos, plenty of video games. Crystal interviewed Scott Steiner and Petey Williams. You have to admit this was better than a video game. Okay, here I really wrote Steiner and Petey. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. This was awesome. Steiner said something. <laughs> Steiner, I actually had to rewind this against your better wishes. I, that hurt my soul when you did that. I had to know what he said. He said something about Petey qualifying for something, an X-Gate match, and that Petey could be the X-Title division champion at the pay-per-view. So we rewound it, and we still don't really know what he said. Petey wanted Scott's briefcase. Steiner said nothing was free in the world. And Petey had to know that some of the wrestlers would pay big money for an X Division title shot. And then Scott threatened to initiate him again. We had Petey versus Curry Man. 
This also, better than video games. <laughs> I merely wrote the words curry man in the largest letters I could manage. And, and by the way, at this point, the first, it probably been out 12 minutes in actual time, but the, the opening of the show, I was as miserable as I've been in years and years and years, just hating life. And the instant I heard, Konnichiwa, I sat up, my eyes went bright, and I thought, Curry Man's coming on, hooray! <laughs> and I love the show again. It was awesome. He's magical. He really is. Petey Williams, uh, I, 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 I've long since given up on the psychology of, of certain men, including Petey Williams, who is a heel, yet at the beginning of every match, he runs wild and does a cool dive to the outside. Correct. Why? I don't have any fucking idea. <laughs> so, uh, Curry Man was beaten on, he made a big comeback, and, um, and then he won with a Northern Light suplex after Raka interfered. He must win this, this X Division title, by the way. And I should note that Raka Khan is utterly, completely useless. <laughs> she looked totally clueless and did absolutely nothing but stand there like a mannequin. And afterwards, Steiner came out, handcuffed Petey, put a black sack on his head, and then to the back! Presumably to rape him. We don't know what happened. It was to the back. We never saw them again, yes. Curry Man is so goddamn great. He, all he does is headlocks and dancing, and it's awesome every single time. Yeah. He's the anti P.D. Williams who busts his ass doing a crazy springboard hurricane around the floor every match, every week, and no one cares. Curry Man, Curry Man comes out and wiggles his ass, and everyone goes crazy. Yeah. He's amazing. He's my favorite wrestler right now. Yeah. Team 3 did a shitty promo. Actually, there was one great part when Cornette said he wanted to that. move someplace like Kansas where he could grow corn. 3D's promo, this is probably back down to my, my, my early show, uh, whatever the opposite of buzz, whatever the opposite of buzz would be. My early show, Depression. When 3D basically said, this show sucks, everyone watching should kill themselves. They did, actually. And I thought, they do watch the show. They know what's going on. Then we had Samoa Joe coming out in a suit. He said at the pay-per-view he was getting what he'd wanted for a long time, a fair shot at the title. He gave some shout-outs, including to Kevin Nash. And, Nash first, by the way. Yeah. He named Kevin Nash first, then the fans. And then uh, he ended up concluding by saying the next time we saw him, he'd be champion. I am presuming that Joe is not going to be on TV for four weeks. I don't know this. This was never mentioned by anybody. This was never specified by Samoa Joe. Yes, the pay-per-view is not this Sunday. He merely said, the next time you see me, I will be champion on Impact. Or the next time you see me on Impact, I will be champion. Thus, that is my presumption. I don't know, everybody. Presumably, I have no fucking idea. He's going to go back to the islands and do some training. Did he say that? No, I just said that right now. <laughs> Can someone say that for me on the show? <laughs> just said. Can somebody help me out? He just said he was going to be gone. Perhaps he'll just take a long nap. He didn't even say that. He just said, the next time you see me on Impact, I will be the champion. Stop thinking about it. It's not worth your time. It's just it's two times on this show now. There's two times on this show where they've assumed we know something, and they're at 50% so far with me. They're at 0% with you. Motor City Machine Guns against Relic and Black Rain. Machine Guns are still in the doghouse. They were beaten by these two fucking geeks. And uh, it, it was so sad because when you watch the match, you could just tell these guys just didn't care. They yeah. went out there, and they did their stuff, and they didn't care. And uh, who can blame them? This was bullshit. And then uh, it got, actually got significantly worse afterwards. Yeah, you know, Losing a tag team match quickly is not the end of the world. Losing a tag team match quickly and then watching as that tag team, two men, are beaten up by Eric Young, one guy, a geek, that's bad. That made me angry. Then we had... Uh, also, it apparently means Eric Young versus the Monsters is still going on. Yeah. I, I don't know what's happening. Borash told AJ someone was there to see him. It was Karen. She uh, told him everything would be okay, and she was going to go do something, and who cares? Tomko came in. He was mad at AJ, and they were partners, and so they fought. Yeah. He Fuck said you. they needed to win tonight or else, and I don't know or else what. It was not specified. Kurt versus Kaz... They had a, a fucking, as good a match as you're going to have in about four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> this was the highlights of an awesome match. This this was a match where it's like, if they would have had 20 minutes, this would have kicked ass. And instead, they gave them four minutes. Angle uh, beat him with the scissored ankle lock submission. And uh, you remember when, when Impact was an hour? And they were always talking about, if only we had two hours. We just need more time. We just need more time for these matches. We'll have more, we'll have better, longer matches. 
Kurt Angle and Kaz, five minutes. You're a world champion. Five minutes, everybody. So Karen came out and she said, I want a separation. He said, great. Now I can devote myself to fully to beating Samoa Joe. And he said, after lockdown, maybe we can sit down and talk. Are there any papers I have to sign? And she said, no, Kurt. And he said, you'll take care of the kids? And she said, sure, Kurt. And he was like, great. And then she left almost in tears. And the announcers were appalled at the priorities of Kurt Angle. And, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll start where you left off. Yes. The announcers think it's terrible that the world champion wants to retain the belt. <laughs> I'm not saying athletes should shun their families for a month leading up to fights. But listen, he wants to win the belt. He's going to about keeping the belt. That makes the belt seem important. Yeah, so why would you do an angle to make that look bad? I don't know. Because <laughs> they're don't retarded. Know. Because they're fuckwits. That actually was not what annoyed me most about this. This would probably not, not annoy you at all, but Kurt Angle grabbed the microphone and basically he, he said, I'm the best ever today, but I'm not the best ever of all time. What in the fuck does that mean? Well, I figure he just didn't know what the fuck he was doing in his promo. That promo was ridiculously ridiculous. Uh, uh, something. He was just rambling. That 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 was a bad ramble. Somebody forgot a line somewhere. That sucked. Another rough cut with BG and Kip. This was actually the most realistic and compelling thing on the entire show. But it was 40 seconds. Well, no. Well, here's what's weird about it. It's like both guys are talking about problems they've had in their relationship with each other. And when you listen to it, you sort of feel bad for them. That they were friends for so long, and all these little misunderstandings came to a head, and they broke up. And what you want more than anything else is for them to get together. You want them to sit down with a beer and shake hands and be yeah. friends again. I mean, you watch these, and you don't want to see them wrestle at all. <laughs> these are so completely ineffective, <laughs> unless the ideas are getting back together. It's possible, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought of it, but it's true. Neither guy is coming across as the bad guy. No. They're both coming across as, as people. The, the other great part of this is that BG's talking, and he said, well, I left my other job when I was fired for drug use. And then they cut to Kip, who says, well, I had enough up there, got released. <laughs> <laughs> he was fed up, and so they fired him. That was, that was when he had enough, was when they let him go. Uh, they let him go, and he said, well, screw you guys, I'm going south. Interview with Christy and the Rock and Rave Infection. Christy was in leather pants, so there, you can only complain so much, and but this is useless. They make me laugh. And I may well be the only person, but that's fine. They make me laugh, and I, I, I reach for bits on this show that entertain me like like sunshine. I, just, I seek them out, and, and this made me laugh, so I was happy. LAX and Sleetus against Rock and Rave and Christy in a mixed six-man person tag. It was uh, short. The girls went at it. Salinas gave Christy the hardest clothesline you've ever seen, and her breasts were completely exposed. I have no idea how we saw nothing here. <laughs> they were not... They were she, asking, her, her, she must have one of those boob jobs where, like, the nipples are in some really funky place. Possible. Because we saw 90% of her breasts, and she doesn't have a nipple. <laughs> so they may have just removed it. <laughs> Maybe entirely gone, yes. I, I have no idea how we saw so much breast flesh and no areola. It's impossible. It, it is an absolute mystery. Perhaps they photoshopped it out. That was the only thing of value in this match. Uh, Hernandez did a dive. Hernandez did a dive. Homicide did a dive. I do question, though, we didn't see the match, but didn't... The Rock and Rave Infection win at the, uh, or LA, LAX won the pay-per-view. Now Rock and Rave Infection wins here. Can somebody please just get over? <laughs> no. Is that hard? It, yes. It's funny you should ask. It's impossible. Jay Lethal and SoCal Val went on their date. This had been built up for weeks. And so we got 30 seconds and it ended with Sanjay Dutt dragging off Val and they said to be continued. Who could care? Not I. I just like that their date was they went to Universal Studios. Val, sweetheart, on our first date, I'm taking you to where we go to work. <laughs> wow. Team Prawn beat up the voodoo chick backstage. This went 30 seconds. Again, this had been built up all week, and we got a 30-second segment. Completely useless. Brush interviewed Gail. <clears throat> oh, hey, no, I couldn't find that segment. I thought, Jesus Christ, I, did I write down nothing? And they went so quickly, it was Sanji and... and Sanjay and Val went on a date where they met Sanjay Dutt, and he stole Val away, and then they went to the announce desk where they said, we're going to the back, and there was Team Prawn, and they were putting a makeup on the Voodoo Queen, and then they beat her up. It was all going so fast, so quickly, it cannot be explained with a period. No. It has to be done and told in one giant run-on sentence. Yes. Frankly, I should have been more out of breath by the end of that, but this was terrible. 
Velvet Sky and Gail Kim had a match. God bless Velvet Sky. I will say this first off, that she's a very pretty girl. Very lovely lass. She is horrible. She takes the worst bumps. I mean, these aren't even wrestling school bumps. These are worse than wrestling school bumps. Strikes, worse than wrestling school strikes. This was a one-woman show, and it was not Velvet Sky. And Gail Kim, I believe, won. I don't even remember this was so bad. I assure you she won. (laughs) I didn't know they might have had just a run-in. Oh, yeah, she won with the Celtic Cross. Angelina Love ran in. This was so much better than the actual match. And uh, then then, uh, Kong came out, and uh, the only bad thing about this was Gail gave Kong a spear. Gail is 110 pounds at the most. Amazing Kong took a giant bump. Yeah. This was fucking ridiculous. No, Kong should not be bumping for a spear from Miguel Kim, nor should she be on her back getting pounded by Miguel Kim and need to be rescued by the manager. Yes. That is bad times. Everything else about this was fine. The, the problem here, oh, then ODB made the save, and then it was to the back! And I should note that the the problem here is the women's segments are always the highest rated, so now they are trying to lengthen these as long as humanly possible. And Kurt Angle and fucking Kaz got four to five minutes. And I think this whole segment with the girls went 15. It least. may well have. This just went forever. And with the fucking Velvet Sky in there, bad times. No buys. No buys, my friends. Then we had the greatest thing I've ever seen. I just, I laugh every time Kevin Nash is involved in anything, whether it's comedy or when he's being serious, which he was here. He went up to Christian because Christian was looking for a partner, and earlier he'd asked Rhino, and Rhino told him no. So Kevin Nash comes up, and he's upset that Christian did not ask him to be his partner in the main event. Kevin Nash was angry that someone didn't ask him to work. I call bullshit. You think this may have been a lie. This was so out of character that I could not buy it. Kevin Nash wants to wrestle? He asked? See, Bullshit. I like better shenanigans. Than Kevin Nash, the hero, the mentor of the next champion, the 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 the, the, the man behind the scenes of the big babyface movement, his feelings were hurt. Yeah, he was he was basically whining and crying that that Christian Cage did not come to him first. Fucking pussy. Even though their team name was the Unlikely Alliance, and we were told over and over they were not friends, he came out and whined like a girl. AJ and Tomko versus Nash and Christian. I don't think Nash got into the hot tag. No, oh, Chris just started, ran wild, and then they got heat on him. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he wanted to work, but not that much. Team 3D ran in for the DQ. Uh, the announcers, as usual, had no idea what was going on. 3D helped beat on Nash and Christian for a long time. They destroyed both guys. And uh, after AJ, Tomko, and Team 3D as a foursome, Beat up Nash and Christian. Tanae wondered if perhaps they were going to be on Tomko's lethal lockdown team. Hmm. There's a fucking mystery right there. Hmm. Hmm. Uh-oh. I almost sneezed. So anyway, I don't know where Joe was. Oh, he went home. He went home. He, he was yeah. not champion yet, so he could not be seen. Christian and Nash have no other friends. Machine it's Guns not... clearly bailed. Yeah. Lethal was still on his date. And lethal was on his date. Fuck, what can you do? Kaz was beat up. Yeah. Sucks to be them. So uh, as soon as the beating began, oh, oh, Team 3D after the show was over, it was about to end, and they grabbed the Survivor Geek and started beating him up. And as soon as the beating began, it was to the back because we had to do the video package to end the show or whatever it was, and a mess as usual. <laughs> we can't even do the celebrity appearance right. A mess as usual. Floyd Mayweather in his first show got an intro segment of like 30 seconds and then was devoted to a 12-minute angle. Joel from Survivor on his first show gets a crowd shot, and then he gets punched, and the show ends. Yeah. Fuck you, TNA. <laughs> Fuck you for wasting my Thursdays. These guys. Thank are God bad. for Curry Man. Thank God for Curry Man. Oh, this program, TNA. TNA. Borash opened up the show, running everything down, so there's going to be an open workout with Kurt Angle later. That's the only thing I cared about. And then Cornette showed up and signed Rhino versus Tomko, and he was giddy. I have no idea why, but this made him happy. Booker came out, cut a promo. 
they had a table in the ring all made up with champagne and the like, and he said, we all knew what this was about. They were about to welcome back his soulmate, the lovely Charmel. And crowd popped and chanted, welcome back, and he said he would never put her in harm's way again. They hugged. Robert Roode came out, and this, that, and the other thing. Finally, the point, the point is, Cornette and Morgan came out, and Cornette said they had a problem at Destination X. He said he'd promised when he took this job that everyone would always have a level playing field. Every decision needed to be fair, he said. Or it may not be fair, but at least it would be what's right. What's right? Do you have any idea what that means? I don't. I do. It may be unfair, but it would still be right. Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means that at the pay-per-view, there was a, a, uh, there was a camera angle that showed that Kurt Angle touched the ground before Christian, and Jim Cornette did not rescind the decision. And now, fucking four days later, he's talking about how everything is fair and right. He said he was very upset that in the Rude versus Booker match, an unannounced, unbilled person ran in. A run-in, everyone. Okay. Now, okay. A run-in. <laughs> right, Hold going on a minute. This. this fucking thing pissed me off. He's mad that there was a run-in at the pay-per-view, and four days after not reversing a decision in which they had fucking video proof, he's talking about how everything is fair and right. It's made me very mad. Well, here's the one annoying me most of all. This run-in that Jim Cornette protested, this run-in that set an unlevel playing field, did not occur until after the match was over. Yes. The match had already ended, then Charmel, Charmel ran in. So, let me repeat that. A match ended, someone ran in, and then Jim Cornette got angry. And the only reason is, apparently, because Charmel was unadvertised. So, if you're an advertised part of the TNA roster, it's okay to jump people and kill them. However, if you are not advertised, no run-ins. You must get clearance first. You must let the people know you're going to run in. Then it's okay. No one else ran into the pay-per-view? No one else runs in on every single post-match segment they ever fucking do? Team 3D and did do it five times on this show? This guy's retarded. It gets better. Cornette, who I thought was a babyface, apparently I'm wrong, signed Rude and Banks versus Booker and Charmel in a cage match at the pay-per-view. Rude and Peyton cackled. Booker went nuts. And uh, that was that. Oh, Cornette said, you have so much energy, you have a match with AJ. This segment sucks in every fucking conceivable way. Thumbs down. No buys. <sighs> I hate this show. Some of you will recall that last week I had a meltdown. I'm prone to emotional meltdowns once in a while. I just, believe me, it's gotten a lot better. Trust me on this one, but. I decided that rather than just waste my time watching Impact, I was going to be productive. And so I came over, I brought a yoga pad, and I laid it out. And for the first half hour of this show, I just watched it and did yoga. And I felt fine. I thought, well, that sucks. And I moved on to Warrior 2. I was ready to hit you with a yoga stick. Especially when I was in my room here trying to uh, set everything up. And all I could hear in the fucking other room was deep breathing. Deep breathing, yes. I was like, what the fuck is he doing out there? Do I need to walk heavy before I walk into the living room? <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. Nothing like that. So then we had AJ crying about having to wrestle Booker later. He said he had a special guest tonight. And then Team 3D showed up and said they'd all be partners with Tomko in the cage match at the pay-per-view. I believe there was yelling here. I just zoned out. Okay. He came in, him, him being Bubba Ray, and he came in and said, yes, we're going to be partners at the pay-per-view. He then teased that they would feud for the tag team titles later. They have been partners for, swear to God, five seconds. <laughs> he already talked about a future title match between the two. We won't want your titles. We'll worry about that later. My God. <laughs> Partners must fight at the instant they team up on a line in this show. Brush interviewed Eric Young and Kaz. They have a match tonight. Eric said he hoped Relic and Kaz didn't show up because he was still... Or Relic and whoever the other fucker is. He's still scared of them. This is lame. Kaz and Eric Young versus Steiner and P. Williams. We had a good wrestling match. And then uh, Raka, I believe, was supposed to trip Kaz and forgot... Which is good, because that would have been an unannounced fucking interference in that match, and Jim Cornette would have lost his mind. So Eric ran wild, and then out came the two scary guys, and he was distracted and pinned. And uh, Steiner then, um, or he pinned him, and then put the mask on, what's-his-face's head, and dragged Maybe. him to the back. And <sighs> I, 
guarantee you, Scott. Hold on a second. Okay, go ahead. We're supposed to believe that Eric Young is scared of these two men, but when he puts a mask on, he's not. Yes. I hate this program. <laughs> well, it is stupid. I find that far, far down the list of things to hate. His mask is like a security blanket. He feels better. I can deal with that. It works. <laughs> Dude. He feels better with a mask on. He's a grown man who has a mask. He's a grown man that's scared of Relic Well, and and Black Rain. At least when he puts the mask on, it feels better. He gets encouragement from that. He fools himself into thinking he's a superhero. This is retarded, Vince. I can't even believe you're defending this. He's idiocy. feuding with a guy. He's feuding with Dustin Rhodes, who is not aware that he is Black Rain. Now you have Eric Young, who is not aware he is Super Eric. There's Nobody is aware. Is he now? Yes. He is aware. I misunderstood this. Wait a second. Hold on a minute. You're telling me that Eric Young doesn't know he's Super Eric? He, he talking, goes into a trance? He was on this show talking about, I wish Super Eric was here, and the fans are changing Super Eric. He looked at them funny. This is so stupid. And it's getting even stupider the more you defend it. Well, that's possible. All I know is that this is a fun little tag match with a very simple story, and I guarantee you Scott Steiner put it together because, A, it was simple and made sense it was fun, and, B, it made Scott Steiner look, look like a killer. Because they were the heel team, PD could do nothing right, so Scotty tagged in, and then it just killed everyone. And then they got the heat on one of them, I forget who, it doesn't matter, probably Kaz. And there was a hot tag, and Eric Young ran wild, and everything was going fine, and then the monsters came out. Sit down interview with Christian and Rhino. Today said Rhino didn't want to do this, so he had to talk him into it. And if Christian tried to embarrass him, he would never be on his interview show again. Oh, no. Christian said he would... He'd been a dick for a while. Now he wanted to be friends. And the best part was when he said, I'm not going to apologize because it won't do either of us any good. What? In what way would apologizing for your behavior not do Rhino any good, Christian? And and I... I who writes this shit? None of this makes any who sense. Who writes this shit? They were talking about their blood feud, which I had utterly, totally, and completely forgotten about. I was trying to think, did they feud on SmackDown? Did they feud where? When did this happen? I don't know what they're doing. Well, you see, they explained it because Rhino said, one day, my young daughter was watching television, and what did she see when she turned it on? She saw Uncle Christian beating and bloodying Rhino. And he said, listen, you can beat me and bloody me all you want, but when you bring my family into this, that's too much. Did Christian turn the TV on? Did Christian sit the little girl in front of the fucking TV Rhino has no problem being beaten up, but he has a problem with his kids watching it, and his kid watching it is Christian's fault? This is a revolting little story that made no sense. I don't I don't know. This is a poor feud. But there, to, to build on this later, they established that Rhino and Christian once had a feud, Christian wants to be friends, Rhino doesn't. This is established, oh, half hour into the show. They tried. I know what they were trying to do. The guys did fine, but this is so stupid. Then we had Rhino and Tomko. Most of the match, of course, took place during the break. Rhino uh, made a comeback, and, and uh, Tomko, I guess... Oh, AJ clotheslined Rhino, so Tomko got the pin. Rhino's uh, losing streak continues, as it often does. I guess he won on the pay-per-view, but anyway... So Tomko gets the pin. AJ rolls into the ring, and the fans start telling... Uh, telling the ref that AJ's under there. Today goes nuts. I think Earl Hebner should reverse the decision. Now, the only fucking evidence that Earl Hebner has is the fans saying that AJ did something and AJ's under the ring. There is video fucking footage of Kurt Angle's foot touching the ground first. But apparently that's that's not enough. This made me upset. This angered me. As, as there are standards for what is appropriate for a reversal change often, yes. You, you, you're correct. Then it gets better. The ref was about to reverse it, but more dudes ran in, and apparently the time limit had expired. There was no winner announced. No, no, no. There was a winner, but apparently... They ran in before he had a chance to reverse the decision, and thus the chance was gone. The statute of limitations expired. Yes. It's you, 90 seconds. You've got 90 seconds or whatever to reverse the decision, and if somebody runs in and distracts you, it's just too late. So all these guys ran in. 
Christian made the save. And then Christian wanted a handshake, and Rhino just shook his hand. Yes. It's over. When I, when I said, <laughs> when I noted the prior segment, the, the sit-down interview took place a half hour into the show, I thought we would get back to this in an hour, because it's been two days since we saw this. I forgot, it was the very next segment. Yeah. It took them ten minutes. Rhino got over it. This was uh, two months worth of angles done in ten minutes. Yeah. This company sucks. And it gets better. All the bad guys are beating on the good guys, and, and uh, Nash runs down to make the save. And so uh, Cornette, I guess, came out and announced it was going to be 3D versus Rhino and Christian. So instead of Nash wrestling once, he wrestles zero times, and Rhino wrestles twice. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> what else would make sense? Jay Lethal and SoCal Val went out to dinner. And Lethal, the cruiserweight champion of the earth. The cruiserweight champion of the earth. Keep in mind that, that Floyd Mayweather is a 154-pound champion of God knows how many organizations. And he's got millions and millions and millions of dollars. Meanwhile, the TNA uh, cruiserweight champion of the earth is poor. Mm-hmm. He takes, he takes his dates to the place where they work. Then he picks the cheapest things in the menu. That's right. And asks her to pay. Yep. Sanjay then showed up. He said he worked here because he's poor too, you see. When he's not wrestling, he needs to make ends meet. Yeah. Yes. Apparently. We in, are a rinketing company, and our guys make nothing. The story is that, that in real life, Randy Savage was really cheap, and thus this was a this was a rib. You know, Brian, I, uh, I remember watching Randy Savage matches when I was 12. I'm now 32. I didn't get this reference when I watched this uh, segment here. You don't say. It went over my head. You don't say. Yeah. So in telling an inside joke that went over your head, they buried their cruiserweight champion and the guy who's going to be the number one challenger. Yeah. Idiots. I don't even. I. I, I just. I, <laughs> I, I would say they're doing a show just to entertain themselves, but you know what? Now that I know the secret behind the skit, it's still not very funny. No. It's not entertaining. Sanjay in Homicide. Sanjay faked an injury, begged the ref not to stop it. And then Homicide fell for it like an idiot and got a small package for the pin. Then Sanjay danced and marched around victoriously. Oh, which, he danced. It was at least funny. <laughs> it's the best thing he's ever done. The, the, the jig he cut. It was awesome. But then the whole idea was that he was trying to impress SoCal Val. By being a coward and cheating, this was supposed to impress the girl. Well, it worked. And then they beat him up afterwards. And then he got killed. <laughs> I could not write a worse show. Like, yeah, like if I were paid $20 million and they said, write a worse show, I just couldn't do it. I, I, I would try and it would, it would, it would unfortunately make more sense than this. You would slip up and there would be some logic in there. I mean, I, I couldn't even think of doing something so dumb as, as what I saw on this show here. I, I couldn't! I would write the worst show I possibly could, and I could not think of things as stupid as what they did here. Crystal interviewed Booker and Charmel. They were going nuts about this cage match. Why did she have to show up? Well, Will they be arrested? I don't know. Perhaps she would be fired from her non-wrestling job. Then we had, uh, it was a good promo by Booker, I'll give him that. The story just makes no sense. Bring your A game, sucka. And we had BG and Kip with another one of their wacky little interview segments. And as mentioned last week, these are good in that they, they both come off as, as honest and there's a, a believability to them and that sort of thing. But when you listen to them, you want to see them get back together. You don't want to see them fight. It's like you're listening to two guys that used to be great and had their problems and split up and, and you wish that the, the, the glory days would return. You don't want to see them beat on each other. Thus, failure. I, I did like B.G. James, the, I, I guess he's going to be the babyface in this feud, but he's talking about how he's uh, older now and he's not that into wrestling. He doesn't want to work out. He's got more important things to do, like hang out, hang out with his kids. He's not much of a competitor. <laughs> can't, can't do backflips, he said. <laughs> All he can really do is say suck it and then leave. Yeah. <laughs> and then meanwhile, here's Kip saying, I was carrying, I was carrying him. That may be harsh, but I did 60% of the work. And I thought, well, yeah, <laughs> perhaps you did. AJ and Booker T 
I wrote AJ versus Booker Styles. That don't matter. AJ came out before the match, brought a special guest out. It was Karen. So much on sending her home. That was good. So, anyway, she cheered her new man on. AJ bumped all over the place. Then uh, Rude came out to watch and got kicked out. Why? I have no idea. I, I and he was not advertised, apparently. If, if if everything were consistent, I would have no problem with this. But it's 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 inconsistent. Even in segments, it's inconsistent. Why why was why was Karen even allowed out there? Karen's oh, allowed out there, but Rude isn't. Oh, she was a special guest. <laughs> she was allowed to sit in a chair ten feet from the ring. Robert Rude was not allowed to stand at the top of the ramp eighty feet away from the ring. This is just so idiotic. And then Peyton Bass came out and attacked someone at ringside, and no one cared. Yeah. And then Charmel fought back with a strap, and whatever fire she had at the pay-per-view, she lost. This was the worst fight I've ever, ever seen. <laughs> this was embarrassingly bad. I can't believe this made TV. They had 10 days to edit it off. And, and, and no, it was Charmel throwing her whip in the general vicinity of Peyton, and, and Peyton would go like, did that hit me? I guess I better sell. Ow! And it continued. And they showed it in detail, and it was all it was on TV for... The worst 30 seconds, Pratt? Well, not even this night. It, it was bad. It gets better. We had, we had A.J. and Booker, mind you. A.J. and Booker. And during this match, Booker's wife got in a fight at ringside. Who did this distract? If was you answered Booker, Booker T? T, then you were a dipshit. In fact, the Booker T's wife versus the other girl brawl distracted A.J. Styles. A.J. was distracted by... Booker's girl and Robert Roode's girl fighting, and he was pinned. Booker didn't give a shit. No. He didn't care. And then Karen disappeared. Karen vanished from the face of the earth. <laughs> you know, this show was actually much worse recapping it than it was watching it. It, it really is, now that I'm actually recapping it. I, when it was over, I was like, well, that was a bad show. Now I'm like, that was, this, this is the, the worst show of the year so shit far. I've ever seen. Crystal interviewed Awesome Kong and uh, Raisha Zababa. And, uh, anyway. They're gonna beat up ODB and Gail Kim. Team Prawn against Gail Kim and ODB. They set up this match by showing footage of Team Prawn beating up the Voodoo Queen. Yes? Indeed. Why wasn't she in this match? Well, I don't know. And, and. The uh, crowd noticed there were chants of We Want Roxy. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Fans, fans smarter than the Bookers. So, Velvet's horrible. Heat on Gail. ODB ran wild. Gil sent Sky outside, and then ODB pinned Velvet, and uh, that was that. I actually thought the segment was longer. Well, there was one more thing you noticed. The, the match was sloppy, but all things considered, it wasn't horrible. So Team Porn has been defeated. Gail and ODB leave. Out comes Roxy Laveau. Oh, yeah. The voodoo queen. She's pissed off because they beat her up and put makeup on her. So she stops the ringside, and the, voodoo, the, the porn chicks from the ring, and they turn tail and flee. Yeah. And I shouted... There's two of you. One woman chased two. <laughs> One woman chased two. At least this time it was the baby face. Yeah. Like, at least it was not two baby faces running from one heel. This would not last, everybody. They plug next week's show. It's the biggest impact of all time. It's going to be interactive, they said. It's uh, like Cyber Sunday. We're voting for who's going to challenge Awesome Kong for the title. And uh, the show's going to do a 1-1. They did a one this week. It's already down to a one. That's great news. Just such shit. So then Borash interviewed Kurt about the Karen thing, and Kurt went ballistic saying Karen didn't exist. None of the bullshit mattered. He was training harder than ever, and uh, he was going to make sure that he beat Joe and retired him at the pay-per-view. He said Joe could train all he wanted, but tonight he was going to be in action and would not be beating one man, not two men, not three men, but four men. Beat them bloody. And this was a fucking great segment. This is a great promo. It's just like... It was, it was so too little, too late. It was, all I could think was, perhaps if you hadn't spent the past year plus ramming, you down, down, ramming down my throat the fact that you are, in fact, a colossal geek who, who whines and cries and, and is goofy, and now all of a sudden you can't just flip a switch and turn you into a badass. No one's buying this. They had a video package for Joe. They talked to some dudes from Real Fighting Magazine. They're trying to play this off like it's going to be an MMA fight. And... uh then we got the the angle angle Delia Bob his his open workout. He wore no boots. He taped his wrists and or his hands and his feet actually, and he faced four men and they did sort of worked MMA. In that uh, the men put up no fight. Well, they they may have put up a little bit of a fight, but not much of a fight. And Angle beat the holy shit out of him, and he beat the first man with an arm triangle. 
beat the second man with an Achilles tendon hold. They called a heel hook. Third guy with a guillotine, and the fourth guy with an illegal headbutt to the face, which everybody uh, booed. And then he punched him from the mount until the ref stopped it. And it's pretty clear that Angle was starting to get tired with that third dude in there. And also pretty clear that he has, in fact, done some MMA training. His stand-up was not horrible. Well, it was pretty fucking horrible, actually. He was in with... Uh, it, it, he he would have beaten your average geek on the street. But uh, any, any real striker would have killed Kurt Angle. And I think uh, anybody, any real jiu-jitsu guy would have killed Kurt Angle. But uh, for your average uh, enhancement geek, he beat them up. And he's been doing a little bit of training and... And uh, cut a promo afterwards saying he knew Joe was out there and all the training in the world wasn't going to help him. They announced that Frank Trigg was going to be on the show next week to talk about this. And I can see how some people would hate this. Because if you push that this is real, what the hell is the rest of your show? And it's a valid complaint. For what they were trying to do, this was the best thing on the show by leaps and bounds. And uh, especially when I look at the rest of this fucking show, how horrible it was. But, you know, it's 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 one segment. I don't know if it's going to be worth 60,000 buys again. There there has been too much of, of Joe being beaten all over the place and being just another guy. There's been too much of Angle being a geek. But it was an interesting concept. I don't know if it's going to work in pro wrestling the way it's been uh, been pushed here. They, they mentioned that, that Angle was training in a number of styles – including MMA and pro wrestling, which is a fucking ridiculous statement because if pro wrestling was real, it would be MMA. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, next week he's got a pro wrestling match with Angle and Tomko. That's the style he's going to work next week. So, anyway, that was that. All I could think during this was I was fascinated thinking of what was going through Kurt's head, how I guarantee you he's going to do a radio interview at some point. He's going to talk about the time he... Out, he, he did MMA training live, or not live, but on impact, and defeated four men. He's going to try to convince people this is real. Yeah. It's going to fail, and it's going to be intriguing. Yeah. And we had the Christian and Rhino versus Team 3D. Uh, I have no idea why even review matches. They, they wrestled for a minute, then it was to the back, and then we had, uh, what do we have? I don't even care. What happened in this match? All I wrote down was 9 million things going on, a commercial break. Oh, yeah, Team 3D ran in for the DQ. Oh, they were wrestling. Oh. AJ and Tomko ran in for the DQ. Oh, AJ and Tomko oh, ran in. That's Definitely got the peak, yes. AJ and Tomko ran in for the DQ. So there's, that's running, by the way. Jim Cornette was fine with this. <laughs> he did not have a problem with that. I guess they're... An unbilled run-in. Yeah. He was fine. So, anyway, so the four heels are beating on the two baby faces. So I come more baby faces. Nash came out. Got killed. Shark Boy, Curry Man, killed and killed. Machine Guns, both killed. And so by the end, you had the four heels triumphantly standing over seven dead baby faces. Yeah. All dead. Yes. Thank God Samojo is not there. Who writes this? Who could be so dumb? I'll give you three guesses. I just, I just can't understand the show. I mean, the more I review this, the more angry that I get that a show could be so poorly written. I mean, <laughs> all that talk about run-ins, and then you have a run-in in the fucking in the main, main event. event. <laughs> in the main event. And in the in the Booker T match. Four heels being on seven baby faces. That's right, a run-in in the Booker T match when, when uh, Cornette was upset about run-ins and matches. It's just such a bad show. I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. Everybody just stop watching the show. Please! Stop watching the show. I beseech you. It's already down 300,000 viewers from the peak, and hopefully it drops even further. And, and I hope that the live show does a point nine and they just get canceled. I cannot take any more of this shit. Just die so that all of the good wrestlers can go to WWE and we can stack all three brands and life will be good again. This show just shit. What a what a waste of talent every single week because the fucking people in charge are retarded.